Pandora. We begin this story with you. Not in a very pleasant way. You, or we find you, running Ugh. through the streets of Ashkeline. This is, this is gonna suck. You are followed closely, feeling the hand at your back of your grandfather, pushing you along. There's throngs of people all clamoring, crying, screaming, making their ways towards the docks, towards Merkden. You hear off in the distance the sounds of cries of people, all manner of races being consumed. Literally being blood being pulled from their bodies. Your grandfather, his hand at your back, pushing you towards the docks. Go! We need, we need to hurry. Get to the dock. Get to the docks. All right, keep up, old man. She's kind of like squeezing his hand occasionally, making sure he's still there. Don't. Don't wait for me. Don't you fucking dare start with me in that shit. In this moment, you feel you feel another another smaller hand uh, grasp it. You see a halfling down at, at your right side, just sort of trying to push past you, uh, screaming. You see uh, off in the off in the distance another um, a minotaur that's coming out of an alley. Suddenly, hands suddenly reach out of the alley and yank him in back into it, and he's disappeared. You hear a a loud grunt and roar come from the minotaur, and then nothing. Silence. What the fuck is going on? Give me a perception check. I have low wisdom! <laughs> First roll. Oh god, this sucks. I'm scared and I have minus one. I, seven. I don't see shit. Seven. As you run, you feel just sweat just pouring from every pore as you just are trying to make, you feel all these hands just sort of grabbing you and just all these throngs of people as you're pushing through just this riot of people going through the streets, all of them trying to escape, not only these shadowy figures that seem to be one by one picking people out of the crowd, oh, I hate it, I hate but it, I hate it. the smell of flames, of fire. In the very quick, just sort of, like looking around frantically to see where your grandfather is behind you. You see back, back west of you, away from the docks, you see the Shadow Ford engulfed in flames. Oh my God. The place where you and your grandfather have lived for many years. It is at this point that you finally arrive at the southern docks of Ashkeline. To your to your left, you see up up raised up on a higher hill above the Starriness district, you see the the castle keep of Winterhold. Spewing from the tops of its ramparts, just this cloud of it couldn't be bats it looks a lot like bats you feel your grandfather's hands on your back suddenly falter no no
I go to grab him. Go to grab him. As you turn, you see something that chills the blood in your body. Standing in the middle of the street, the old orc bard. Being held by a hooded figure. Their hands around your grandfather's neck. Beneath this this hood and this black cape, you see clearly the red guard armor. Oh no. That you know belongs to the queen's uh, basically secret police. Absolutely not. And you see the face of this creature, this pale face with these glowing red eyes looking at you in kind of a a sick smile. And they sink their teeth into your grandfather's neck. Can I fling a spell, something? Can I dive for them? Anything. Go ahead. What would you do? Um, oh god. I would, what would I do? What would I do? Um, oh, firebolt, 150%. You're gonna do firebolt, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Am I rolling, or are we just experiencing? You can this roll. Nightmare. Go <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Do I have? Do I have a top here? Am I just wrapped in this nightmare? Holy shit! That's a nat twenty. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. 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 Um, you just sort of frantically. It's almost a knee jerk reaction. You see what is happening to your grandfather. You see this creature's fangs sink into your grandfather's neck, and it's it's almost instinctual. These, these spells, this source of power within you that has been bestowed on you through your parents and their weird relation, their weird relationship, but also their weird relationships with the gods they served. Yeah. You feel this power course through your veins and then suddenly spring out from your fingertips, shooting not just completely shattering the armor and blasting this red guard's arm completely off. He loses his grasp on your grandfather. Your grandfather's blood just oozing from the holes in his neck from this wound left by the creature's maw. The creature reaches down with his other hand and grasps his arm, holds it up, looks at you. Come for you next. And then he starts to walk slowly towards you, not in a hurried way. I just want to, can I put my grandfather behind me in any way, shape, or form? Uh, so at this point, you see the there's people all around you still oh, running towards God damn it, for the docks. People. Everybody, everybody does not even seem to be fully aware of the horrific thing that just happened in front of them. You, your grandfather, very weakly, just sort of reaches out and sort of grasps you, your your shoulder and starts to like try and push you away. I, I want to hold his hand. I want him to come with me. Okay. Go, Pandora. Go. Just come on. get to safety. Come on. come on, you old fuck. Let's go. I I don't want you. Come on. You can so do you're, this. Are you, pulling, are you pulling him with you? Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. Um, Give me, you can either give, yeah, give me a strength check. Come on, Orcish Roots. Pull through. <laughs> Pull through. No. Three. Okay. Whether it's the fact that you just unleashed this incredibly aggressive, powerful spell that suddenly just shot out of you, and you feel sort of momentarily your 
your strength drained slightly from your body. Or it's the fact that all of these people, not conscious of you and your grandfather, are just knocking into you, and you suddenly feel yourself being pulled and dragged away. I think she's still reaching for him, going, Granddad! As, as you do that, you suddenly feel a sharp, a concussive blow to the back of your head. I need you to give me a constitution saving throw. Did this, did this motherfucker whack me with his arm? It's not the, it's not the, uh, <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> Could you imagine? Man, 12. I rolled that okay. one nat 20 and from now on we're just, we're just going downhill from there. Okay. As you, as you're reaching, scrambling, trying to grab for your grandfather, as he's being, is being literally separated from you by all of these people and these people are pushing you down towards the docks and you're just you're unable to get to him suddenly you don't know what happened but suddenly your world momentarily goes black and you feel even though your eyes are not perce perceiving the world around you you feel like the pressures and the prods of all of these people just sort of pushing your body away Suddenly you find yourself very momentarily, just as you regain consciousness, you feel your body just sort of being hauled onto, like hands just sort of hauling your body onto a, onto a ship. It seems like minutes and these seconds sort of ticking by, suddenly you, feel another force this is but it's a force that's not hitting you entirely it's a, but it's a concussive blast as you write yourself you suddenly see that you are on what appears to be a merchant vessel and as you look out you see behind the ship at this point several hundred yards away from the shore you see the city of Ashkeleen full view on fire you see Winterhold Keep, this, what looked to be a cloud of bats suddenly descend down into the streets. You hear throngs and clamor of screams of these people expiring. Standing around you are other Ashkelenians just on the boats, you see tieflings, you see a halfling, uh, uh, you see the halfling standing next to you again. The one that got yanked? No, the minotaur got yanked. The ash, oh. the, the halfling, <laughs> the halfling, the halfling okay, sort go. of was making was its way. Like, oh God, why are you on the fucking boat? <laughs> you see some dwarves, you see some elves, you see one or two orcs as well. As they are looking back, just their mouths agape, just staring in shock and horror at the city that they call home. Something does catch your eye though. As you look up past Winterhold Keep down towards where you know the Starriness District to be, the place where both your parents had temples to their gods, you see a peculiar green light. You see the crystalline spire of the Temple of Talos, the domed temple with the crystalline spire piercing through the center of it with its lightning encased within it, just sort of coursing. Suddenly the temple begins to gl just glow this ominous, sickly greenish hue. It grows in intensity. And then is gone gone a couple seconds go by and then another temple oh my god and then another temple the temples to the gods in the star in its district are vanishing at this point that you sort of frantically look around trying to see if your grandfather made it and you don't see him anywhere. Do I have any, any indication of who knocked me on the head and dragged me on the boat? No. Because when I find point. them, I'm going to kill them. 
You're not entirely sure if it was intentional. Intentional or if it was accidental. Yeah, if it was accidental. Yeah. Still gonna kill nobody <laughs> nobody was giving two shits about who they were about knocking About anyone, to. yeah. Where so do I see him so he's not on the boat? Do I see him back on the shore? Or by the docks? After witnessing the disappearance of some of these temples, suddenly you see two two figures floating above the city. One completely engulfed in a blue flame. The other one seemingly engulfed in a blackish, foggy smoke. And then suddenly, they come together with this crack of energy. One, suddenly casting the other down into the city streets, there's a massive explosion and shockwave as multiple buildings suddenly get thrown into the ocean. Suddenly springing back up, the, the one shrouded in black shoots up and makes connection again with the blue flamed one. And this blue flamed one is cast past, deep, deep into the west, past the city. That is very moment, just very brief, suddenly the blue flamed one comes in and hurls this portion of a, a temple directly into this one shrouded in black. Pandora, your parents, the short time you had with them, did tell you stories of Ashley, of its place, of the mythology and the myths surrounding its existence. And you know that this city is was founded on a location where gods once fought. And in this moment, the stories that they told suddenly come flashing back into your mind. And you realize that is potentially you're witnessing another battle between two gods, two deities fighting with complete disregard for the lives that are being harmed around them. I hate them. I actively hate them. A series of concussive blasts just as each one is trying to find an in with each other. Suddenly you feel just like the boat beneath you suddenly get almost lifted up out of the water as one of the figures casts the other down and the impact creates a massive tidal wave that drives your boat out further into the sea. This, just sort of this lifting, sort of you leave the deck for a second and then you impact and the world goes black. Greetings, beautiful nerds. Welcome to our first session of our new mini series, Our Flag Means Doom. What the Exploring... heck's going on in Miami? <laughs> uh, yes. I am excited <laughs> to continue this journey with these brand new heroes as they sojourn through this world, encountering all manner of new and exciting adventures. But who better to introduce themselves than our wonderful cast, starting with Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Andy. Uh, I am uh, usually known on TikTok as ValveMax010. I make silly little videos, little skits. I really enjoy doing that. Uh, and today, <clears throat> I'm going to be playing one. Brash Briggs, that's one first mate, Brash Briggs. Uh, Loxodon, at your service. Pleasure to meet all y'all. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to do a fun fact. <laughs> I love myself a good melon. Brash loves himself a good melon. <laughs> that is a fun fact. <laughs> Blanche. What is up, everybody? I am... Uh farm grown nerd you'll probably know me as on tiktok or on youtube wherever and i'm playing blanche foray the herringon ranger and a fun fact about blanche beef jerky is my favorite snack love She's it not a herbivore <laughs> <laughs> no no carrots and celery for you 
No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, Emma. Hello! My name is Emma Ramosco! You can find me as Emma Ramama on TikTok or Emma Ramosco underscore VO on everything else and things, and I'm playing our trauma child Pandora today! <laughs> you saw in the <laughs> intro. <laughs> um, fun fact about Pandora. Um, oh, here's a good one. So, uh, so she wears a lot of makeup, but when her makeup is off, she basically has no eyebrows. So she dr pencils on her eyebrows. So if you ever see her in the morning, like it looks like kind of alien. Um, she rarely lets anyone see her without her brows on. <laughs> Kelsey is laughing. That is, that is another fun fact. That's another fun fact. <laughs> He's Gamora. He's Gamora. <laughs> oh my God. Huh. I was thinking more drag queens, like how they have like no eyebrows when they're first getting ready and then they pencil mm -hmm. them on. But Gamora works too, absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Seth. Hey everybody, I am Seth. You can find me on TikTok at Noctopus and Instagram and threads at Noctoctopus. And I am playing Hatch the Dragonborn. Fun fact about Hatch. Hatch is Episcopalian. What? Hatch, hatch found Jesus. Hatch what? Wait, what? No, no! <laughs> that is I a very funny fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, no! <laughs> and, of course, as always, I am your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, Andy, a.k.a. Mr. Dandy DM, and I can be found on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, on all the socials. Uh, if you happen to come across this episode and you enjoy it, please consider catching some of the other shows like Shadows of Ashkaline and The Survivors of Ashkaline. Uh, we do, of course, appreciate all of you who have liked and subscribed thus far. And now that we've got our intros out of the way, let us dive into our first episode of Our Flag Means Doom. Blanche, I need you to roll for initiative. <laughs> Let's go. Bar oh, fight, bar dang. fight, bar fight. Do, do I have to use Avre? Sorry? D the D&D &D Beyond. You do don't I have, have to, use... to use it, no. Oh, thank God. No, use, use physical <laughs> dice if you have them, yeah. Oh, shoot. That's funny. 22. 22. Okay. All right. Blanche, you find yourself on the deck of the... Remind me of your ship's name again? The Hair Trigger. The Hair Trigger. You find yourself <laughs> on the, the, the deck of the Hair Trigger. Uh, opposite you is a tiefling uh, who you know to be... Uh, Rack, and he has his knives brandished at you. Setting the scene, you all, you and Brash and your crew aboard the Hair Trigger have just escaped a, what was originally thought to be a very well-rounded plan on how you were going to uh, stealthily insert yourselves into uh, Grim Talbot, the island that is known to be the home of the human pirate clan, the Charybdis Marauders. You, you, unfortunately, this plan, uh, given your your knowledge of the island itself, was perhaps not as well thought out and you very quickly found yourselves in one of the, uh, in the main city on Grim Talbot, uh, you found yourself uh, encountering what looked to be a horde of, uh, of some kind, a pirate's horde uh, by the leading captain. You, unfortunately, were not able to take hardly any of the treasure that laid before you. Uh, the only thing, the only thing that you managed to grasp was uh, the 
Brash ended up grabbing a, a bag. He just sort of like grabbed it, grabbed a bag. It was on a, a top of a bunch of coins that was lying on on this uh, brick stone floor. And you just sort of like tossed it over your bag, and it's like, oh, that's kind of heavy. A lot heavier than you thought. Uh, I guarantee you, there's some good shit in here. I'm telling you. Yeah, and and you just sort of went with that, and you guys just high tailed it out of there. Um, you make it back to the hair trigger. The crew all accounted for. With one addition, it seems that uh, one of the crew members uh, got a little bit lost trying to make their way uh, through uh, the the fortress, and they ended up in one of the uh, the prison areas, and they encountered a, a lone prisoner there, who was very very tall, and as they as they looked them up and down, it appeared to be this kind of just sad looking orc uh, female. And they uh, they decided be a shame to leave you here. Uh, you look nice enough. And they uh, unchain uh, this this female orc and they, they tell him to come along. Uh, Pandora, you again are racing uh, along with this pirate crew uh, as they make their way back to uh, their ship. It has been many months since you first left your home and found yourself captured by pirates. Yeah! What? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Ca Carib Disbrotters? Carib Disbrotters? Charybdis. Charybdis. Unfortunately, Blanche, um, this, uh, this, in retrospect, poorly thought out plan is uh, perhaps uh, one that falls in a long line of uh, poorly thought out plans. This was supposed to be one of the ways that you were going to prove yourselves to the other pirate clans uh, that uh, inhabit the Shabazz Per Islands. And it was kind of going to be one of your ways to like join the union. You have to pay your union dues and you're going <laughs> to. There's a and pirate gonna, union. <laughs> and you were going to, this was going to be your thing. You were going to like, hey, no one's ever gone into the depths of the Grim Talbot Island before and no one's ever taken a piece of treasure. Well, guess what? If anyone can do it, it's Brash and I. And so you guys, uh, you guys enter the island. It does not go as planned. And now you find yourself back aboard the ship. And it's at this moment that Grack decides to lead a mutiny. Oh. Bold choice. Here we go. You see how that plays out for him? I see you're feeling bunny, my friend. Go ahead, hop. Sorry, Captain. It's just been you've just been making some really poor decisions, and I really don't think it's you know, no hard feelings, but I don't think that it's your time to lead this crew. And oh, cry listen, Brash, me a river, Brash, build uh, a bridge and get the hell over it. Oh uh, well, I, I I can't I can't do the, the crew and I. We had a discussion, and we think that it's time that I I t I take I take the tiller of the boat, and I I it's time my time to Brash. Seriously, I don't want any trouble with you. My, 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 I don't say anything, but I do just stare at him with a very stern look. Okay. Like, really? Okay. <clears throat> uh, all right. Your initiative roll was? 22. 22. Uh, you will go first. Awesome sauce. I imagine while we were running through through this place, there was probably some cobwebs in a few spots, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> then she reaches down onto her coat and goes, oh, you know, I absolutely despise dusting myself off of trash, but if you insist, and she casts web. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all righty. And that is a dexterity saving throw, DC 10, as unimpressive as that is. Uh, that is a nat one. Hey! 
<laughs> have one of you mutiny. It. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, he immediately gets webbed up, in uh, and he's <laughs> sort of stuck. Oh, come on, Captain. You ain't gonna fight me fair. Sugar Bean, when do I ever do anything fair? You see how tall I am. I have to use every advantage I can. Now, there's a choice I have from here. I can either let you go and let bygones be bygones, or I can throw you into the ocean. Which would you prefer? Blanche, please describe what your character looks like. She's two foot tall with her ears because they do stand up straight. So she's her head stops at one foot and the ears go an extra foot. She is a solid white albino snow hare, hence the eating of meat. Um, she's got a very, very fine traveling coat on. It's her favorite thing. It's made of silk. And she always seems to have a bug climbing just around the very edge of her neck. This is a silkworm. <gasps> uh, Grack is a... Uh is a tiefling. He is your bosun, uh, and he's just wearing studded, studded leather armor. He is currently webbed up, but he is uh, has two, uh, two branching two daggers in his hand. Um, he he looks at the rest of the crew, and it does seem. Give me an insight check, real quick. Would this be a role that I would also be able to make? Sure. With a minus one, that's a 14. 14. Okay. Uh, that's a 13. Okay. Um, Brash and Blanche, you very get quickly get the uh, impression. You're very outnumbered here. Even with the fact that Grack is currently webbed up, you would be going up against 20 crew members. Oh. Well, t uh, actually, no. I'm sorry. You would be going up against 19 because the... Uh, I... Hold on one sec. I'm sorry. The I've been saying orc. You're half-orc. Uh, yeah. The half-orc uh, half is not a member of the crew. They're no, just a hapless prisoner her... who's suddenly just ended up on this boat. <laughs> she's curling her hair with her wand while she watches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you as you sort of get the lay of the land in this moment, what do you choose to do? Well, Brash, we got one taken care of. Exactly how many do you think you can take? Well, that's a tough question. Uh, uh, how many of y'all feel like drowning tonight? Uh, the <laughs> crew does seem to be very intent on supplanting you as captain and first mate. Um, they do not seem to be very intimidated at, at this point. Um, the whole thing with Grack being webbed up was definitely a surprise, but they, they know that 20 on, or 19 on 2 is... Decent odds. All right, let me break down how this is going to go. I have not had a good day. I know y'all have had a similar not good day. But trust me, we are on the verge of a rebound here. Now, I need y'all to be patient. Y'all have been sailing with us for how long? They've been sailing with us, Lance. I, I'm not entirely certain. It's been at least a couple weeks. See, y'all done lasted longer than the last two crews combined. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh if you're going to be on this boat, it's important that we trust each other. Now, I know we don't make the best decisions 100% of the time, but 30% is still better than zero. So, let's let this die down. You, All the crew Brett. are sort of just looking at each other right now. Just wait. None of them are like very competent mathematicians, but they're all just like, wait, thirty percent still sucks, right? Greg, Greg, <laughs> <Come on. laughs> 
Tyler, nobody asked for your opinion. Tyler! Man. <laughs> God, Drick. Come, come talk Tyler, the Aracocra, the Aracocra fruit <laughs> shipmate is sort of just like looking at him, just no, I'm, I'm for certain, thirty percent sucks. <laughs> Fucking trust fund pirates. God damn it, Tyler! What are you an accountant now? <laughs> Shut up. I go over to Grack, and while he's webbed up like this, I'm just gonna put my arm around his shoulder, and I'm gonna kind of walk him over to the edge of the ship. I'm gonna be, hey, listen to me, man. Listen, let me talk to you. Why don't you tell me what's got you frustrated? Well. Dad. While he's doing all this, can I sort of like scurry down below real quick? Uh, yes, you can. Um, uh, just really quick, uh, Brash, you still have the sack. You're still holding on yeah. to the sack, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. all, right. Uh, all right. Pandora, right. what Pandora, what are you doing in the moment? Um, still you a... see, yeah, curling the hair. So you see a towering six foot three or, or six foot five in heels, woman of human and orcish origin with pale green skin um, and a presence a little bit larger than life. Her wild hair is held back by a headpiece with two skeleton hands meeting to hold a dark gem in its center. Um, now this is a bit banged up and bruised since she's been in prison, but she has large high-heeled thigh-high boots with a black slit skirt, um, wearing heavy makeup. She looks like she's more prepared for an operatic performance than a journey at sea. And strapped to her thigh, she has not only a holster for her book, but also a little spot for her wand, in which she's currently curling her hair right now, um, watching this all unfold. Um, specifically watching what does the first mate look like? Because he's the one talking most of the time, right? Brash, oh, yeah. what do you look like? Uh, Brash is a uh, seven foot five loxodon with uh, really just normal grayish wrinkled skin, weathered skin. Um, he has uh, a little shorter than average tusk length. Um, down the bridge of his nose are about six uh, kind of gauge piercings, uh, kind of like bright orange there. He's wearing a Napoleon style jacket, but the sleeves are torn off, but the shoulder tassels are still there. And it's kind of a royal blue and a gold. It, it, it's functionally a vest, and that's pretty much the only kind of shirt he wears. And he also just has some basic black breeches and a big leather belt with a gold buckle, or a bronze buckle, rather. And uh, he doesn't wear shoes because he has a hard time finding shoes that fit him. Oh, oh, the trials and tribulations of being seven foot five. It's so <laughs> rough, man. <laughs> the big and tall just stink out at all. <laughs> There's big and tall, and then there's Daryl. <laughs> uh, Blanche, you are you descend into the ship's hold, uh, which is um, aside from a few crates, um, very sparse. Uh, Y'all haven't had any real good. Um, Y'all really haven't had any good ventures uh, at all um, that would require your hold to be in any way full at this point. There are, of course, the, you know, the different uh, weapons that you keep within the hold. Uh, there is the cannon uh, on the sides, uh, both uh, starboard and uh, the opposite of starboard. Um, port? <laughs> port, thank you. Starboard <laughs> and port. Oh yes, by the way, uh, this is a pirate campaign, so there's <laughs> probably going to be some nautical things that- We gotta yeah, learn I'm some gonna, words. I'm, like, I'm gonna have my Honestly, Google open. Honestly, you know what? Don't even bother. Don't even Pull bother, because I mean, it might rig. just sort of add to the mythos of you guys just being terrible pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Our flag means doom for us. Exactly, yeah. exactly. There you go. So. Uh, you you see, uh, and then there's some crates uh, that you that you see that are, are um, barrels that you know uh, have the the powder in them. Okay, I don't go for any of that, and I instead go grab a uh, a small container that typic that uh, typically contains her her swarm inside of it, and she just opens the lid and goes, "All right, babies, it's it's time for us to make a little bit of a show. Come on now." And she activates her writhing tide, and she flies out from below from below deck with just this massive swarm of lunar moths all around her as she's hovering and they're holding her up. And she just, all right, who's first? Give me an intimidation check. Tiny rabbit 
riding the back of moths. <laughs> Wild. As the seagulls begin to gather. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Nat 20 plus 2. Hey! Yo, nice. As you ascend onto the main deck with all of these lunar moths just sort of billowing uh, beneath and around you, a crew just, their eyes agape, just sort of like, and uh, Tyler uh, noticeably is very, very uh, terrified. Um, Grack is like webbed up, but he's also being like a, Brash has his hand around the shoulder and he's sort of talking to him like, hey. Um, and what you, you say? You said you volunteer? That's right. Hey, Blanche, we got a volunteer right here. Uh, well, you know what we say about volunteers. What's that? I don't know. Just throw them in the water. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you you just toss a uh, crack. Uh, he just sort of like, ah, and he just topples into the water, all webbed up. At this point, the water uh, makes contact uh, with the webbing, and it suddenly becomes this very like gross morass of just all kinds. Of, it's like very sticky, but it's a little sort of like melting at this point. Um, and uh, he is like he's now just in the water, just sort of struggling with that, just sort of doing a very uh, haphazard uh, dog paddle. Uh, still managing to keep his head afloat above water. The rest of the crew are they're all just like, all right. You, you see you see Tyler suddenly st step up and he's, now listen here, Captain, uh, we don't want any trouble, uh, but listen, if, 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 you, if, you're, if you're not going to like let Grack be captain, then we're, we're going to we'll take our chance on the island. All righty. And I'll uh, send, and I'll send the swarm of lunar moths uh, out to shove him in a direction up to fifteen feet. Hopefully, that's off the boat. Yes, uh, that will be off the boat. That uh, so Grack and Tyler are both knocked are both knocked off of the boat, and that le suddenly seventeen crew members. Uh, Blanche, I need you to give me a perception check. Twelve. Twelve? Uh, this is something that, given your uh, your time at sea, would probably be fairly noticeable, even given the situation that you find yourselves in. Coming around an outcropping uh, on this island that you know to be Grim's Helmet, you see a ship uh, that looks to be larger than yours, with bright yellow sails, with a black insignia, uh, on the flags. Uh, you know it to be uh, a Charybdis Marauder ship. Oh. Oh, hell. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, Br you, you, Brash, you see that? I, is what I'm looking at right now. I'm, 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 I'm seeing it. All right, everybody. Well, here's the thing. We can either all die here in a few minutes, or you can shut the hell up and we can discuss this somewhere else. At this point, you see uh, another uh, Herongon, uh named, uh, you know him to be, his name is Lenny, or Leonard. Uh, you, Not the rabbits, uh, George! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's, he's much taller, comparatively speaking. Uh, than uh, than you, Blanche. But he uh, steps forward and he's like, Captain, do, do you want us to grab Grack and uh, and Tyler out of the water? We could probably use them if we're going to try and, and, and make a break for it. Just throw a couple ropes in there and tie them to the side of the ship. And have them drag along. If they can't hold on, that's their problem. Fantastic idea, Brash. Uh, yeah. Uh, so at this point... Um, there's going to be a series of rolls um, that I'm going to have. Um, Pandora, you are uh, you can choose to help or not. Um, but there's going to be a series of rolls. Brash, I'm going to need an athletics check from you. And gotcha. a Blanche, I'm going to need you to give me an intelligence roll. Uh, and Pandora, you can choose to either assist uh, with one or the other. Nice. It's a 19 for athletics. Go ahead. 
I'm curious to see what the intelligence roll is first. Um, I mean, like, what she's, like... Two. Um, um, what is because I want to make it want to make uh, it is a game. it is so it is basically uh, Blanche is in front of the the tiller of the ship and uh, they or the wheel and they are consulting some charts uh, of the oh. map and I will drop the map of Grim Talbot uh, here for you guys. Mm-hmm. I think if it's a map, then. Uh... Casting prestidigitation on her clothes, cleaning off the dungeon and, you know, prison dust. She saunters over to the map and she'll peer over um, the Herringon's shoulder and I'll help with that roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, So you're going, so I will say that gives you Blanche advantage. That is considerably better. That is a 15. That is a 15. Okay. Uh, And uh, Brash, what was your athletics check? 19 total. 19 total. All right. Uh, Brash, with your, suddenly your voice uh, drops into the lower register and you suddenly have this more commanding presence and you just start to bellow orders and all of the crew suddenly like jumps into action and they immediately begin to clamber up the, the, the sides of the, of the ship and just start to just pull on all of the tackle and all of the the rope and basically dropping the sails some of them are also working the anchor getting it back into its place um you do see uh behind you look behind you and you do see blanche uh looking at some charts sort of a little bit confused uh it, like trying to figure out like what's the best route to take out of this and then you see pandora just sort of come alongside and just like and you, you don't you don't hear words necessarily. You just sort of see them gesture at the map. Um, currently, uh, if we're referencing the map of Grim Talbot, you are on. So there's the island uh, portion to the left uh, or to the west, rather. And then there's the eastern islands. There's like two eastern islands that uh, and you are actually you are in the area around Shadowcaster. Gotcha. So you are in just outside of the bay of Shadowcaster, which is on the eastern island. Okay. And then heading north east from here would take us back to Purpley, correct? That would take you back into uh, the... Hold on one second. That would take you back to... That would take you back into the Sea of Carbassard. Uh, Grim Talbot is a part of the, as part of the Shabazzpur Island chain, uh, Grim Talbot is the northernmost. Um, so if you were to head due east, that would take you to Zephyr or El Fayed. Um, if you were to go slightly north of there, that would be Breca. Um, okay. South would be Muafi, Ufadma. You would have to then, uh, you would have to then sail down past the plains of Mahir, and then you would be coming towards Purpley. All of that within the Sea of Carbassard. All right, Cap, what's our head? The fuck out of Dodge. I need a name, Captain. <laughs> I need a name. Please. You, you, as, as you see, uh, before before Pandora walks over and, and helps point out, Blanche kind of... Oh, just... <laughs> like turning oh, no. it a couple different oh, no. ways. <laughs> Because I'm trying to find exactly where on this map, and my computer's not wanting to work with me, so please bear with me. <laughs> Wait, this is a moment where where art imitates life. Art imitates life. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. This is a very big map you made, sir. <laughs> I I apologize. Uh, it big is planet. It's a big. Um, let's see here. Do I have, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't have a scaled down version of the, it's because I saved it in PNG and it's not saved in like a JPEG. That's the reason why. No, like, you're good. I'm just, I'm just trying to get a, a, a good image of exactly where we're at from the Grim Talbot map to the world of, to the rest of the Odromia map. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Where are you guys, are you guys trying to, you're trying to go to Purpley? Or anywhere in particular? 
No, just just away for right now. Zephyr, Zephyr. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Zephyr directly directly east of you. Okay. All right. All righty then. Uh, you uh, begin to make your heading, uh, and you're just heading directly east. Uh, you're able to get around. I'll say on a 19, um, you know, very quickly, very semi expertly um, able to direct the crew uh, to where they need to go. You immediately weigh anchor, you drop your sails and you immediately start to feel the wind, just fill your sails and push you out east. Um, you do see that the, uh, the other ship immediately begins to turn and match your course uh, in pursuit of you. Um, I will need you both to give me, uh, Blanche, I need you to give me a dexterity check. This will count as a, uh, a piloting check. Um, and uh, Brash, this will be, I'll need you to give me another. Actually, I'll need you to give me either an athletics check or I will need you to give me a survival check to see if you are able to get any more uh, speed out of the sails. That is an 18 on dexterity. Okay. Uh, that would be a 18 as well for athletic. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, um, you guys both working in tandem. Uh, Pandora... Uh, what are you doing in this moment? I know I didn't ask you for another role. Yeah, no, it's good because after, you know, glancing over the map and like gently indicating with her wand, she's now just lounging, um, you know, like basking in the sun, trying to get a little sun on her face. I mean, she was underground like for this prison for how many weeks? So she's just like lounging. It's been about a week and a half. Yeah, so she's just kind of like, it's like lying like arms behind her, you know, almost like a 1950s pinup calendar. Just Would lounging. I see that from where I'm at? <laughs> uh, at this point, Brash, you are fully focused on like giving the crew direction and also like hauling on some of the, on the rope that, you know, the rigging that gets the sails up. Um, you're actually in the process of working with uh, Grack and Tyler, both of whom have um, been brought back aboard the, the boat at this point. Um, they're both yanking on uh, another uh, another sail at the front of the ship uh, that is going to be used to give you guys a little bit more extra momentum going into the going east. Um, Rash, what has become of the bag? Uh, shit. Um, the hey, Tyler. You seen that burlap sack I had just a second ago, right before I pushed him off and I pointed at Greg? Uh, Tyler points back towards, uh, there's, there's this, uh, there, the stairs that go up to the, the, uh, the main portion where Blanche has the, has the tiller. Pandora is also up there as well. And uh, you see that, you know, underneath the stairs, sort of lodged in there with some other uh, barrels, um, is where the bag just sort of get, you sort of like tossed it to the side. Okay. Uh, I will run over, go grab that real quick, and I'll look for like a spare barrel that's like maybe on the deck. And I'll just pop that in there for safekeeping for a second before okay. I head back over to the rig you're, and try and help there. This is a dumb question. Yeah. This is a dumb question. You're grabbing the bag, aren't you? You're, you're picking it up? Picking <laughs> it? <laughs> Folks at home, oh. I'm an idiot. <laughs> the answer is yes. I'm grabbing the, answer, the bag. Yeah. You're hacky it sack it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I hacky sack the bag. Matthew, Matthew McConaughey it. So, uh, you, uh, you grab the bag. It feels heavier. Like, the like way heavier than it was a few minutes ago. The hell is in this thing? And I, I will take a peek inside. You open it up, and it is pitch black inside the bag. I'm going like, to angle it toward the sun. I'm like... What in the hell? Doesn't seem like, to make any difference. 
Can I put my head closer to the front of the bag? Uh, Hatch. What does... <laughs> what does Brash hear as he puts his head closer to the bag? You, you would hear a, a string of expletives, just, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. It just gets, like, it starts far away, and it gets progressively louder. What the? Oh. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, Brash, you feel just a massive, just blow to the side of your head sort of not like it rings your bell for sure uh but suddenly you feel just the weighted armored foot of a humanoid form suddenly come crashing out of the bag which is very weird considering it's a small bag nothing really to write home about and it's not big enough at least from your way you're sitting uh to contain anything larger than maybe like i don't know a few gold coins maybe You, you immediately, you immediately sort of are knocked back on your ass. Uh, the other creature being uh, sort of just sort of tumbles and lands sort of like you land like right next to the uh, railing of the ship. You both sort of like brash. You fall on your ass and you're sort of like up against the railing. The other creature also lands right next to you. You guys like the the other creature. They're shorter, but they're not small by any means. Uh, Hatch, what do you look like? So when you look to your side, you would see uh, a uh, kind of a light blue dragonborn. Uh, you're both currently on the ground right now, so it's kind of hard to ga gauge how tall he is, but you know, not 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 short by any means. Um, he's kind of rubbing his head uh, and grumbling to himself. Uh, and you can see that he's got on, you know, various chains and leathers, armor. Uh, the, the kind of odd thing about his armor, though, is that, you know, it all looks kind of dated. Not like tattered or by any means, but like uh, the way that the, the chain mail is assembled, the way that the, the leather is stitched together, the patterns on it. It all just feels very like old, like an old style. Mm. Uh, but at the moment, he is just kind of rubbing his head, kind of getting his bearings. Uh, you also would see uh, like a, a leather bound journal kind of attached to his hip. Uh, hey there. Oh, God's alive. Oh, you, you oh it is it? bright. I will be, I think. Right, Wh hey. Who are you? What, what is this? I will steadily get back up to my feet, and I'll bring I'll bring a hand down, give him a hand up. Like, I'll give uh, you a, a predator handshake up, up to my feet. There we go. First mate Bresh Briggs at your service. Welcome aboard the hair trigger. Uh, quick question: Where the fuck did you come from? Uh, where did I come from? And he kind of looks around, um, kind of panicked a little bit. Uh, oh, oh, and he sees the bag, and he. he hurriedly grabs the bag. I don't know if you were holding it or if you've let it go, but he would he would reach for it. I was trying to pick it up and I couldn't really pick it up. And by the time I opened it, uh, your left size nine kind of hit me in the ear. So. <laughs> uh, I, I, I came from here and sorry about uh, kicking in the, in the head. It'd be all right. I, I will be back. as soon as we get away from them. And I point back at the, uh, the Marauders. It's like, we don't want our asses to be shark bait. We need to get the hell out of Dodge. Let's go. Oh, shoot. We're really starting just in the thick of it. Okay. Yes, it's we a... are. That's how we live. He he quickly takes out the journal and said, you, you said your name was, was Brash? Brash Briggs. Brash Briggs. And he writes it down in like very crude sketch of what you look like. And he closes the journal. You said your how name how was... can I help? Oh, uh, uh, apologies. My, my name is, is Hatch. Pleasure. Hatch. Nice to meet you. Sorry about the rude welcome, but uh, I got to put your ass to work. You see this rope? Rope. I know rope. Pull it, Pull it hard. I, I just immediately rush to the rope in question and just start pulling. Give me a strength check. Well, well this is not going to be the best part of my aspects. It's a seven. <laughs> it's a seven. Um, whether it's oh, no. just the, you know, the fact that you're suddenly, you know, 
bursting forth into uh, this portion of the material plane uh, after you don't even know how long uh, your your muscles have uh, been used. Um, feeling sort of a little bit weak, um, you begin to start to haul on this line um, very gradually uh, with the uh, help of uh, Grack and Tyler. Uh, you begin to uh, bring this sail fully out um, and immediately you feel the, the, the deck beneath you just sort of like shake for a second and it's like suddenly you feel the momentum pick up and you begin to see uh, the sea gap between you and the other ship begin to increase, Blanche. And you see you're definitely making making some good speed away from them. Question for Dandy. Did we all see the blue dragonborn roll out of a bag? So far, the only person who has really paid any attention is Brash. Um, you are sunning yourself, Blanche. You are very fixated on making a, as quick a maneuver as you possibly can, given the fact that you have some extra speed now, and you're trying to like put as much distance between you and the Charybdis Marauders. Um, the only person who knows uh, about Hatch's existence at this point are Brash, Tyler, and uh, Rack. Got it. All right, Brash, we're starting to get to some bite distance. Me in the butt. Oh dear. Sorry. You go ahead, Blake. I was going to say, yeah, you go ahead. No, you go ahead, because I've got <laughs> chaos going on in my house, and I'm like, everybody needs to stop. <laughs> I'll go what ahead. What the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyler, Tyler looks at you, uh, Hatch, and is like, and he just very quietly, so Brash doesn't hear. Just another day for the crew of the hair trigger. Just nothing going right. Rack is just, don't say anything. You're going to get us in trouble again. Uh, I, I will I will leave them to it. I'll, I'll kind of mime the motions, but slowly just kind of phase myself out of that activity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just sort of just like... <laughs> And we're done. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, and I'll approach uh, approach Brash. Uh, could I ask you for a, a better explanation this time? Uh, uh, there's a lot going on here, Hatch. I can see that. Yeah. Can it wait? I've got time, I guess. An hour. An hour. An hour. All right. All right. For this next hour, um, I'm going to need uh, two things from Blanche and from Brash. I need uh, two uh, ex uh, athletics and a dexterity check. It's, so it's a Athletics and dexterity from both of us, or just one from each? Uh, one from each. Okay. I'm guessing I'm dexterity then? Yes, you are. 27. 27. Ooh. Oh, you should have tried strength. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that's <laughs> wow. remarkably better than what I got. Wow. Uh, I got a 16 and a 17. On the 16 and a 17. Checks. Okay. That's still good. Um, so, whether it's through just sheer adrenaline at this point, um, just the crew realizing that despite the fact that they do not trust the leadership of this boat, um, they do realize that they need to work together to not die. And so they all spring to it very quickly, very efficiently. And Blanche, as you're watching all of this sort of take place, you realize that even though maybe perhaps you haven't made some of the best decisions as captain, one of the things you're most thankful for, and it is perfectly exemplified in your first mate, is that you do know how to pick a crew really well. And because of that, whether they appreciate you or not, you know that you guys can make it out of this situation because of the hard work and stick to of everyone in this crew. Um, the crew, again, they snap to it. 
Blanche, it's at this point you suddenly notice the random dragonborn that seems to sort of just be wandering aimlessly on the deck, uh, not really sure, like with a very confused, uh, dazed expression. Uh, and he's just sort of like pawing at some rigging, just sort of like going through the motions, <laughs> just like. Um, and <laughs> not really seeming to make much of a difference, but they look really good at trying to look like they're doing something. Um, and, uh, meanwhile, I, uh, this half orc, uh, giantess behind you, uh, is just sort of just <laughs> <laughs> sun, sun just rays. Leave. Give me, give me your, give me all of the vitamin D. Yes. Uh, and I, because you're, you're, you're kind of, even though you're very like, Tech, you know, typically for a half orc, you're still green skinned. Yeah. Um, it was sort of looking like a little gray, a little paler, because you haven't seen the sun yeah, in a little bit. I haven't seen the sun. Yeah. It's so it's awful. It's at this point uh, for the next hour, the crew works tirelessly uh, to get uh, to basically live to fight another day. Um, the Charybdis Marauders, uh, they burn a very hot pace behind you but then eventually they realize that they're outpaced and they begin to make uh basically turn tail and, and go back to uh, the grim talbot island um you guys now find yourself on the open seas um headed in the direction of the mainland of suristir uh with the heading being zephyr okay uh your course laid in uh you now have some downtime Alrighty, uh, then as the whole, as the whole of the, of the ship sort of calms down, realizing that we're no longer taking, or being taken chase, she, all right, now to more fully address the issues presented before we were all rudely interrupted. Now look, I never at any point claimed to be the best captain of the sea. The only thing I claimed was that I would listen to all of your grievances and not one nan one did I hear before we did any of that business out in that port. You hear me? So if any single one of you wants to blame me, you can look at yourselves. There's three fingers pointing for every time you point a finger at somebody. So, are we going to have any more problems? <laughs> just imagining a two foot tall person saying this all to me. It's just... It's the littlest pet shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The crew, uh, actually, give me, uh, you choose, persuasion or intimidation. Well, as, as intimidating as I believe Peter Cottontail to be, <laughs> that is a, oh, that's a lot better persuasion than I thought I had. 17. 17. Put your knees out. Uh, the crew, um, whether it's just the, the matronly tone uh, that you're using and this sort of the very authoritarian kind of way, like you're, uh, you're correcting uh, a disgruntled child, the, the crew sort of looks down at their feet, even though all of them are taller than you, uh, sort of very shamefacedly, just sort of looking down, just sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be on this boat anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't like broccoli. I've said it a million times. God, they're all children. <laughs> they, uh, they eventually, you sort of begin to see them come around just a little bit. And they realize that maybe mutinying at that point was not in their best interest. Maybe try another time. We'll see. Um, uh, another time. Pencil you in for a mutiny in three weeks. <laughs> Guys, can we, uh, everyone, sync your Google calendars. Uh, mutiny, uh, Friday the 20th. Okay. Mutiny, mutiny, mutiny. mutiny. That work for you? <laughs> can't do so. I got Guys, a 6 p.m. Maybe, that can we do it next year? Can we put it to next year? <laughs> um, Blanche, it's at this point, uh, after, you know, thoroughly chastising the crew that, you you notice your first mate brash is standing very like large and sort of very stoically serious faced just looking at the crew next to you brash slightly behind you is is hatch also sort of just looking very realizing that this speech that blanche was giving was not for them uh it's just hatch is just sort of standing uh pandora 
uh, behind you, again, not really giving two shits about whatever is happening <laughs> with the rest of the crew. You realize it's not your monkeys, so it's no, like... No, this is absolutely not my circus. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Blanche, now that the crew has been addressed, what do you do? All right. Well, now that that business is over, Brash, who the hell is that? I'm going to ask you the same question about that one. And I gesture to Pandora. I'm not entirely sure where she's from, but I must get the name of her tailor. So you find out who that is, and I'll find out who that is. And she sort of hops off to go talk to Pandora. <laughs> you didn't even wait to see if I said okay. You just assumed that. You know what? Never mind. You got a mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I've heard enough about it. <laughs> uh, Never says please or thank you. <laughs> uh, I will go ahead and turn around to Hatch. All right. And I'm going on my break. So I uh, clasp him on the shoulder. I go, let's go talk. Very well. I take it the little angry one is your captain. Yes, sir. Captain Blanche Foray. Not let her size... Lead you, she is one fireball but lady. She will not hesitate to feed you to her form. Oh, uh, I'm scribbling all of that down in my journal. Very crude drawing of an angry rabbit. <laughs> I'll, I'll peek over his shoulder. Yeah, that's about right. Hmm. All right, so put into the stick. You're on the hair trigger. It's a ship of Captain and your first mate, Crash. Blanche, don't know who the green one is. That one over there is trouble. Tyler, I've never lacked Tyler, but he's harmless enough, I guess, when you really think about it. Uh, you know where uh, Buzz Perra? i familiar with it. I've heard the name. All right. I don't you, know if I've ever been there, there myself. You just left well, there. You have. You have. You yeah. You you survived. Congratulations. <laughs> what? What are what kind of boat is this, may I ask? Mercantile? What kind of boat is this? Naval? It's a schooner, if I remember correctly. It is a schooner. I, uh, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Apologize, I I meant purpose. For what reason do you sail? Uh, are you is this a naval vessel? Mercantile? We're Civilian. Of, sort, of a sort, of a sort. Okay, well, you understand how suspicious that sounds to me when you say <laughs> of a sort. What do you want me to say, man? We're all just trying to make a living here. Yes, we are We're pirates. I don't mind using that term. I'd much rather prefer the term freelance privateer, if that makes more sense to you. As soon I... as I hear the term freelance privateer, go glory and freedom! She's just steady going up the stairs. Look Gold at glory there. and freedom. <laughs> Morgan freedom. <laughs> Gold, glory, and freedom. Oh, I thought it was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> oh, freedom. Gold, glory, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> Andy okay. Dupain and sailed the seven seas. <laughs> I remember the time I first saw <laughs> No judgment from me, Brash. I just merely wish to know the. Uh, caliber of people that I am currently a guest of. Yeah, well, listen, we got a couple of rough around the edges, folks. Myself is not excluded from that company. You do right by me, I'll do right by you. You haven't done wrong by me yet, so I'm aboard. I suppose I should count myself lucky I am not a prisoner. You very me you, you really should. You really should. Well, as long as I am on this boat... I would like to make myself useful, I suppose, in my keep, so to speak. All right. Well, uh, there's a lot of odd jobs around here that need doing. Nobody else really feels like doing them. And since you showed up right in the middle of a mutiny, I hesitate to think that anybody will want to do them, at least immediately. So I'll uh, take half of them. You take the other. T take, take them. Oh, the tasks. The, I thought you meant job. the mutineers. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm like, okay, yes, let's do this. But if you, all right. Oh, no. I, I, I do appreciate your gumption. Oh, no. That's suicide. 
tend to prefer to talk my way out of situations before it gets to that. I appreciate it. Uh, one small stipulation on my end, though. I will need to keep this bag. It would be of no use to you. I'm going to assume that's yours, because you're the one who flew out of it. So it's a pretty good right to claim. You you go ahead and you keep... What? Yeah, hold on, actually. You can keep that. What the hell is it? Uh, I tie it to my waist. Uh, it is a very long story. The short of it is, there's other people in here. You might meet them. You might not. Uh, Right, you know they're how, they're uh, nice people. You know how you were saying you needed some explanations just a minute ago? Mm-hmm. All right, roles have now been reversed. Fine. So, have you ever made a really bad deal? I look over at Blanche. <laughs> Consider the ship we're on right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I see her. What is What is Blanche doing right now? Blanche looks like they're about to head over and talk to uh, Pandora. Okay. Just hopping up the steps. I will turn back to Hatch and I go, that's to be determined. Well, I know what it is to have made a bad deal. And uh, it, to put it in shorter terms, uh, the people that I live with are all in this bag. Every single last one of them. And uh, we have some terms and conditions that need to be met in order for them to be Freed of the bag. And that is oh why uh, there is there is a very powerful fae that we must kill. Or we are never getting out of this bag. So you got cursed. They call it a deal. I would call it a curse. I call it a jackass move. How, who it is that? a jackass move. I didn't make the decision. I just I just lived there. Damn. I mean. Are you all right? How, how long were you in that bag? I think that's the first I've thought of this. Uh, you see kind of this thousand yard stare coming out from him. How how long has it been since I entered the bag? What, what, what year is it? Uh, what year is it? So it would be um, Fall of Ashgleen. It is technically uh, 666. PC and uh, the last time or the last major thing that you remember Hatch before this deal was struck was that around the town of Bright Ray your your fellow uh, villagers, fellow townsfolk, they were all acting fairly anxious because there was a very large number of elves that were in the process of making their ways northward. And you weren't really sure what to make of it because all of these elves, it was just a, just a mass of elves, all of them heading towards the crystal expanse. <clears throat> That was the last major thing that you remembered before you were put in a bag. Okay. Uh, well, so what year is it exactly? About a six, six to six right now. Ah, gosh, it is difficult. I, the last thing that I remember was sort of this migration of elves. They were all heading north. I don't know why. It was unsettling to watch, though. I don't would remember I be, how long ago that was. Would I be well versed in that event in history? I don't think so, Bra I don't think Brash would be too well educated. Brash, in terms of you that. know, you don't know the ins and outs of elvish culture and where or when this might have been. You do know that a mass migration of elves that did not take place in Surastir because the elves supposedly are all based in Nimrion. I don't think I know anything about that. Those around these parts. It is all right. I'm sure we will figure that out. I imagine it must have been at least a couple of years for us to be all the way out in the Shabazzpur Isles. 
Were you on Memrion? In your town? He's, hmm, uh, towards the north end of it, yes. You're a long way from home. A long way is an understatement. You can imagine my surprise to find ocean beneath my feet. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you'll get used to it. Don't worry about it. Yes. Well, I am glad to have found myself in the company of friendly faces. I, I look forward to proving my worth to you and your captain. Already and on a good start. You keep that up, a single problem. At the mention Works for of me. captain, we're actually going to transition over to Captain Blanche. Captain Blanche, you've uh, gone up the stairs uh, and are... Uh, you're approaching, you approach Blanche, who is still, at this time, sprawled out, just sort of enjoying the sun. Very thankful to be out of a dire situation. So, um, she'll hop up to stand on top of the banister that you're probably laying on either side of and go, All right, madam, now, I don't generally mind uh, fresh passengers, but I do prefer to know what their names are before they board my ship. Um... And as almost as if a player waiting for a cue, um, you see this woman shift, and as if she's on a grand piano, you know, she shifts to her side, extends her arm out as she prestidigitates sparkles that spew off of her, as she goes, Oh, Captain, my Captain, thank you for saving me, a damsel. It was awful. It was horrific. I barely made it out alive with my life. And so you have encountered I, Pandora, necromancer, extraordinaire, magical item appraiser, mistress of the marvelous Mercabra. Oh, Captain. As she fluffs her hair. Thank you for saving me. However, could I repay you? <laughs> Oh, Sugar Bean, don't you dare worry about a blessed <laughs> thing. Look at you, you poor child. All right. Oh, it's okay. It's fake okay. Tears. <laughs> <laughs> She's just completely like the sparkles. You you did the sparkles. And she goes, little bunny eyes go wide and starry <laughs> for a moment. Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> she well, goes, Pandora, well, you said? Yes. Yes, friends call me Pandora. The whole title, it can fit so much. But I'm sorry, I never knew your name, Captain. Oh, well, if we're sharing proper titles, I'm Blanchette Abigail G Harper Grace Foray, but you can call me Blanche. Abigail Grace Foray, thank you so much for saving me. I, I don't know how I could have endured much more of that torture. Uh, tell me, this lovely crew you have assembled, did I hear that there, there was... And she leans in quietly. Mutiny. Oh, lovely crew. Lost my accent there for a minute. Lovely crew, my ass. They were all just... The people I could find, really. Well, listen. Brash is a little bit different. He's... He's different. The, t the tall woman. The, t the tallest, yes ma'am. Oh, he's different. How so? And she leans in and just props her hand. You know, well, under her chin. She, exactly, as she leans in. He was one of the first ones I ran, I ran into and, uh, and asked to be aboard my ship that seemed to actually want to be. The rest of them had to argue and squabble over money and payments and all that garbage. Brash was just happy to come aboard the ship. You hear, you say, you say money is garbage and her eyes, like, she tries to hide her, you know, reaction. Absolute trash, I know. <laughs> Awful bubbles and everything, useless. Oh versus... no, 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 no! Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me, child. I, I, I love money just as much as the next person, but at the time I didn't exactly have an abundance of it. Right, right, right. So here's, here's, here's what I could do for you, Captain. And she leans over and leans in. Um, I understand the morale of the rest of this crew of, of privateers mm. is down. I would love to assist and get them all on your side. I can do that. Are you sure about that? Of course. I mean, how else are we going to... It gestures to the sea. Indulge <laughs> in this... The salt water in my hair will be something to get used to, but I mean, we narrowly escaped death as she as she takes on your accent, um, gestures back to where they're escaping the um, ship in the background with the yellow sails. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd be very interested to see exactly how you would accomplish that. Please. After you. 
I would be more than happy to, Captain. And, um, so just to be sure. And now she's, like, full-on, like, swung her legs around. It's no longer piano lounging. It's to business to the point. So I'm hired. Hired? If you're interested in a job, then certainly. What's the pay like? <laughs> percentage of any take. What, uh, how much percentage? Depends on exactly how much work you put in on any given stop. If you stay aboard the ship and don't help us with a damn thing, nothing. If you come along, ten. Ten percent. And uh, what is the uh, maximum amount of magical items we are allowed to take? Again, it depends on exactly how many were found. If I find two, you get none. If I find more than that, then we'll talk. Interesting. More than two. All right, understood. Well, Captain, it seems like we have it here. I shall go and thank the crew for saving me. And she alights down from the railing and saunters on down the stairs. I love that woman. <laughs> Iconic. Ten <laughs> percent? There's thirty people on this ship. I know. <laughs> You're assuming she told the same number to everybody else. Yeah. I know. <laughs> More than two. It's that one that makes me that uh, meme. Like y'all are getting paid. Y'all are getting paid. <laughs> Hey? That's Tyler. That's Tyler. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler. Tyler, that son of a bitch. Um, yes. He so. has to survive this journey. <laughs> oh, don't don't say that. Um, <laughs> you all uh, eventually, Blanche. You uh, eventually uh, recombine with uh, Brash, and you get sort of like you swap stories about the Dragonborn and about the Half Orc. I. Uh, Eventually, though, uh, the crew, once they realize that they're out of immediate danger, there's still, you know, a watchful eye up in the crow's nest. Uh, Grack is up there. Uh, and you do see some of the other crew members. They begin to, like, okay. And uh, uh, Tyler comes up and sort of, you know, nudges you, Brash, and is just like, hey, uh, hey, Brash, uh, old buddy, uh, you, um, you got a tune maybe you want to play with us? Or... You know, get a uh, get some of the crew spirits up. Ah, you know I can't say no to that, even if it is you who asked. All right, everybody, let's relax a little bit, and I'll take out my drum, uh, and I will just start to uh, play a little jaunt as we're making our way down, soaring on the coast, and I will at a, at a certain point I will um. After I set up a steady beat, I will take my trunk, the, the, the end of my trunk, and I'll kind of like use it as like its own mouthpiece. And I'll take one hand and start playing the little gauges in my nose. Oh, as I love that. Like a flute. Uh, and um, just a little, a, a little ditty as we go. So as soon as he starts playing, uh, Blanche is doing like a, a river dance almost where she's just got both of her feet kicking up. It was, and it was Grack who led the mutiny, right? Grack is the, Grack was nominated <laughs> to uh, lead the mutiny. Okay. Um, Can Pandora get him to dance with her as the music plays? Grack is up in the crow's nest. Uh, so... Um, if you want to ascend the rigging and get up into the crow's nest, you can definitely uh, try. Oh no, I'm yep. not ascending anything. I go, darling, as she waves the crow nest. Come and dance with me. Uh, Grack, he starts to, for a second, and then he immediately looks at Captain Blanche. She's just dancing. She's not paying any attention to him. He looks at Brash. Uh, he is in his own world right now, like eyes closed, like fully feeling this. Uh, Pandora, give me a persuasion check. I do. This is what Blanche meant when she said he's special. She loves the music. I love the music. <laughs> persuasion. Persuasion is going to be a nine. Grack, he start. He sees uh, the very tall. Even though slightly bedraggled, maybe, uh, half orc beckoning him down to the main deck, uh, he makes for like he's about to, and then he looks at Captain Blanche, and he looks at Brash, and then he's like, <laughs> Next time, darling! And she'll turn around to like, because she told Blanche that she's trying to, you know, get them on their side. So she'll turn to the next, uh, the closest person next to her, who is who? 
Uh, the next, uh, no, Tyler, Tyler is busy, uh, dancing with another, um, he's busy dancing with, uh, Tyler the Arakokra is busy dancing with, uh, the female Harangon, uh, the other crewmate. Um, there are some other, uh, crew members who are also dancing around, uh, all of them sort of keeping a watchful eye on the ocean, but also just very real, you know, they, you know, the weather seems to be, you know, clear skies, although it is getting towards evening. Um, you all, they all seem to be sort of taken up in the moment and Brash's music is very, uh, invigorating and sort of gives everyone new life and sort of like takes the edge off of the anxiety and the stressful moments that you have just recently experienced. Uh, and the music that Brash is playing, it is very much the music of the streets of Purpley, which is to say that is a very uh, Loxodonian uh, harmony uh, to it, but it also has immediate uh, tones of the Feywild because of sort of the Herringon influence in Purpley. Would I see Hatch? Have I seen Hatch or would I notice Hatch at this point? Uh, Hatch, what is Hatch doing? You know, I think Pandora, you said you were looking around to, for a dance partner. I think Hatch yeah. would have taken the opportunity. Miss she would have gone May out and go, Darling, are you a reenactor? I love your costume. His he froze his brow. <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure I understand. You look stunning. Dance with me. As she'll um track him out. Cosplay. <laughs> 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 have, you, have you watched the most recent One Piece? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, not, not that One Piece. This One Piece. This, this is old green I have right yes. here. This is this is cutting edge fashion. I do not understand. <laughs> but he would, he would. It, there's very little dragging. He would happily join right. you on the dance floor. Uh, it's stunning! It's, 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 you must be a reenactor with the detail that you've paid attention to. I, I do not understand. I apologize. I think you have me a little self-conscious now. Why? Uh, you look stunning! I love it. It's so trendy. It, are you talking of my clothes? My armor? Absolutely, darling. I mean, look at yourself. You know, they do say old is new. And of course, oh. old trends are always recycled and they come back round. So you yourself are making a fashion statement of which oh, I, I am very impressed. I, you know, I'll, I'll take it as a compliment, but uh, these are almost brand new. Um, I'm not sorry, vintage? not exactly, I, I guess. I, I apologize. I, my name is Hatch. It is it is lovely to meet you. Oh, I'm so sorry. And she'll step back, and yet again, with the sparkles of presentation. Pandora, necromancer, extraordinaire, magical item appraiser, and mistress of the marvelously macabre, at your service. I shall do a little curtsy. Oh, you have me at a bit of a disadvantage. I, I am just Hatch. <laughs> I do not have any other titles. Just hatch of the vintage ensemble. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Okay, you keep saying vintage. <laughs> these are, <laughs> these are, are freshly boy. Okay, may I may I have this dance? Oh, I'm so happy you asked. And she'll yeah, she'll let him lead her into a dance. Okay, I uh, the crew all uh, at this point, uh, Brash. You're just pacing with your drums, making your music and you are just going about the main deck. Uh, you see uh, the crew all just sort of milling about, uh, some of them dancing, some of them maybe, you know, taking a nip of the grog every every now and then, but all of them just very sort of caught up in the music of the moment. Uh, Hatch, you and Pandora, you, you dance a jig in time with the uh, music. It is very relaxing. Uh, Hatch, you are <laughs> still you are still very unsure of what the date is, of where in time you are. The only thing you know is that you're aboard a pirate ship that has managed to escape a certain doom. And you're very thankful that escaping means that you have the time to sort of figure out like what the lay of the land is. Uh, even though you're sort of like caught up in sort of the the performative nature of this dance that you are dancing with this half orc. Um, Blanche, you are dancing a furious jig 
up on the main deck. Little bunny. Yeah. <laughs> the bunny hop. <laughs> Just. Just be boying. From any outsider looking at this ship, it is a truly odd picture. A very odd assortment uh, of a pirate crew. Uh, but on that note, we will take a break. And we're back. Okay. The, the time that you all spend dancing to Brash's music, uh, you barely even notice, uh, except for the except for the sound of uh, Ger- Grack in the crow's nest, uh, tinging the bell, letting you guys know that the sun is about to uh, descend past the horizon, uh, and the darkness uh, is fast approaching. At this point, many of the ship's crew um, they stop with uh, the sort of the frivolity of everything and the di- and the dancing and the music, and they start to light. Uh, the lanterns are around the ship to make sure everyone has the necessary light to do what you know they need to do for being on a crew. Um, Brash, at this point, you know you're uh, as position of uh, first mate. It's your job to make sure that the watch is called for uh, the duration of the evening. Um, for the rest of the crew, they know that it's their time to to rest, to sleep. Um, Blanche. You know, you can head into your captain's cabin. Um, I, Hatch and Pandora, uh, you don't really know where you're going to fit in. Where are we going? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, on this ship. You would maybe, maybe ask Brash about that. But you do find yourselves evening fast approaching um, on the open seas of Carbassard. Uh, making for the Surastir mainland. Uh, I will say they were... Go for it. No, you go, you go. You go. I was just going to... Yeah, real quick. Like, there will be a moment as everybody starts taking on their night duties where I am still playing and probably Blanche or someone will have to... She's probably used to it by now. Will have to come up and kind of tap me on the forearm and I'll go, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's not already? I almost have lost track of time of getting this. I'm sorry. Uh, y'all, y'all know the drill. Uh, t- t- yeah. <laughs> I'm actually first mate as Pandora slides up. Um, I don't know the drill, and I haven't formally introduced myself, uh, nor have I believe. Oh, have you? And she looks back at Hatch. Did you do the thing with him already? Yeah, we okay, did good. from like fifteen feet away. <laughs> okay, got it. Anyway, turns back. Presentation sparkles. Hello there. I'm Pandora, necromancer extraordinaire, mistress of the McGurn. She quickly <laughs> goes to look at her hand <laughs> that has the writing on it. Uh, magical item appraiser and mistress of the marvelously macabre, who saved me back in the dungeons, and I'm here to give my life to your cause. Did you do the sparkles? She did do the sparkles. Okay. First, always does the sparkles. Just always brush always them the off. A bit. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, well, it's very nice to meet you, ma'am. Pleasure. Uh, Curtsy. First mate Brash Briggs at your service. Welcome aboard the hair trigger. Uh, you would need a place to sleep, I suppose. Uh, uh, at that moment, Hatchard also comes. I, I also uh, might need a place to sleep if it's not yeah. too much trouble. No, that's not too much trouble at all. Um, let me grab a blanket and some uh, some stuff out of my room, and I'll sleep out here on the deck. Sky should be clear for tonight. Oh. Y'all take. Uh, don't be cramped in my quarters, but one of you can take the bed. One of you can take the floor. Oh, you're so position. kind. She's already moving down. As you said, you can take the bed. She's already moving towards the direction of where she <laughs> thinks is downstairs. <laughs> Still need so my blanket ju- out of so there. So good I- of you. So kind <laughs> of you. <laughs> I- <laughs> How goodly of you to take such wonderful care of little old me. Little. <laughs> little old me. Little old me. <laughs> she's, she's little to me. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'll, I'll stand next to you as we watch. We both watch Pandora just skip away to your, to your room to take it over. Are you sure? 
Uh, that is an awfully kind thing to do for people who you literally know almost nothing about. Hey, listen, it's no sweat. You did a lot of good work today. She helped out too with the map. Uh, besides, I don't really have that much in my room. And even if I did and you took it, I'd kill you. Fair. But we're not going to have that problem. <laughs> uh, I'll pat you on the shoulder. Uh, very well. I, I'll tell you what. Tonight, I will take you up on your courtesy. Tomorrow, I do not mind sleeping out here. I mean, by I've then, kept. we could probably... Next time we get into port, we could probably find some more pads and stuff, find another place, bed for you, like the others have. As you wish. Well, about that one, though. That one seems like she's going to be a... Um... a What's handful. the term for... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It looked like everyone else enjoys her antics. I mean, she was dancing with pretty much everybody. Yes. From what I saw, I was kind of, I kind of go I, somewhere. I think a little bit of joviality is something every ship can afford. Right. See, see, you get it. All right. Oh, well. Very well. Good night, first mate Brash. Night, Etch. Welcome to the crew. A nod and all. Follow Pandora in. What the as, oh oh shit! Go. Still me and my blanket. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> too late. As Hatch and Pandora walk to go back and to go towards the room, uh, Blanche will lean over the top from the um, from the wheel position and Brash. Don't you worry about Ma'am. sleeping out here. Just take my cabin for the night. Um, how many times have we talked about this? I'm not sure. I've lost count. Why do you ask? Okay. Well, your bed. Okay, is literally the size <laughs> of my hindquarters. I do not fit. You do recall the recliner that we bought specifically just for you, right? I set aside 50 gold just to get you this nice fancy chair that you can sleep it's in. A recliner on board! Listen. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up. I broke it. I knew it was squeaking. I didn't break it on purpose. It just, it, something, I sat down, something cracked, and I didn't want to tell you because I knew you were going to react like this. I knew you were going to be upset with me. We cannot let yep. the crew find out about these purchases. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going you're going to do the thing again, aren't you? You're going to do the thing again where you make me swallow my pride and tell the damn truth. All right, fine. I want somebody aboard to watch the fucking room that can actually keep someone from stealing whatever's in the captain's cabin, and that is not I. Well, just let me sleep right outside the captain's cabin. Hell. Like this, this very. If you could, if you could hear a bunny growl, which I imagine probably just sounds like. <laughs> oh, she likes you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a purr. It's a purr. It sounds like a purr, essentially. All right, fine. Fine, fine, fine. She just never mind, never mind. So she's not going to bed either. She's gonna stay aboard uh top deck. Mm. Yep. I will uh take my spot next to the captain's quarters and I will take out uh from my sack not Hatch's sack. He has that, uh from my own sack. Uh the husk that was turned into the horn okay. uh, and I would just spend a moment looking at it and going today was not the best day daddy oh, but no. I made my ass out of there and I think you'd be pretty damn proud of that just you old man I'll just put it back in there, lean up against the wall, and I will lean my head back, and I will uh, get some Z's. Okay. <clears throat> Blanche, you have first watch. We'll say that, uh, Brash, you'll have second watch. Uh, Hatch and Pandora, you're not necessarily a part of the crew per se, so you're not necessarily required to have a watch. Uh, we'll say, and I have to, I had to come up with names for all 19 crew members. <laughs> I had to change one because Tyler was not, 
originally uh, a crew <laughs> member, but they are officially canon. Uh, so, <laughs> yay! Tyler, the Aarakocra uh, shipmate, um, we'll say uh, Telcor, uh, the dwarven female. She is going to be uh, she's going to be watch after that, and then uh, Lamegli, uh, she's an elf. Um, there's actually a lot of female pirates aboard this ship. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. Gal power. Hmm. Yeah. Gal power. Quinn. Robots and discount. Okay. Half elf <laughs> male. Uh, there's Tyler the Aarakocra. There's Grill the Kenku. Uh, Sindir, a Furbolg. Uh, Yanlin, a Harangon. And uh, Friedrich, a halfling, uh, to name a few. But those will be the ones who will be on watch uh, over this next period. Um, Blanche, give me a uh, just give me a perception check. That is a nat one. Let's do three. Everything <laughs> seems to be ship shape. A okay. Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. I love a shining that. day on the sea. I hate that. Okay. Yeah, calm seas, uh, night swiftly approaches. All you hear is just the gentle lapping of the waves against they hit the, the boat. It's almost a hypnotic effect. Almost like, you know, how when you have a, when you have a, when you're holding a bunny and you just rub its tummy, they just suddenly just become very like. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's happening with Blanche, but I'm just saying, you know, you get it. Uh, <laughs> she's kind of got one hand resting on the on the on the banister of the, of the ship. She just <laughs> just humming, see her ears just humming the song that Brash was playing a few minutes ago. Um, Grack is still up in the crow's nest. Um, he still is on watch um, as it is his job. Next up uh, for watch is uh, Brash. The hour passes. No, no commotion. No anything. Um. Uh, at the end of it, though, Brash, you feel like the the paw of Blanche just sort of very gently, just sort of like knock you a little bit. Mm. Mm. What's up? It's your time for watch. Uh, you got to do the thing with the thing in the night. <clears throat> <laughs> she kind of half uh, sleepily walks off. I'll stand up and I just stroll around the deck. Just give me a straight perception check. That is a dirty 20. Dirty 20? Yeah. Yeah. Your hour passes completely peacefully. Just the sound of the waves. You hear uh, Grack up top singing a, a song. Uh, that you're not entirely you're not entirely familiar with. It's definitely not native to purpley uh, their music, but you know that uh, that Grack is from Brecca, uh, and you've heard him talk about uh, the, the the part of Brecca that he's from, which is known as the the candles. And so you can only assume that the music that he is is humming or singing uh, up in the crow's nest is something that is native to that part of the world. The hour passes uh, uneventfully. Um, just, you know, that the, the, as you make your way back up to the main deck, you just make sure that you're, have a correct heading, heading in the right direction. Everything seems good. All right, now we'll take my same position, just outside the captain's quarters. Uh, but as I pass by the main mast and look up at the crow's nest, I will uh, do a little, like a little tiny little bird noise See if I can get Grack's attention. Yeah. What is it? I uh and I'm trying to be as like quiet as I can so I don't wake up the the rest of the ship. I know we're not the best. I know you think you can run it better, but most accounts you probably could. But this is her ship. I need you to know that, I need you to understand that, and I need you to respect that. There is... Pause. But you can almost hear the gears and the wheels turning right now. 
as Grack eventually does respond, he's like, whatever you say, Brash. Good night. Nighty night. I will go to sleep. I, I'm assuming you uh, let uh, Telcar know that their watch is up? Yes. Okay. Yep. You find, uh, you go down below, uh, below deck. Telcar is in one of their berths. Uh, and they are uh, down, uh, like a few feet down. You see Hatch in, a, in an empty berth, uh, just found. And you see off to the side Pandora as well. But you see Telcar, you nudge him. Yeah. What can What can I do for you? Sure. Oh, you're your home, Brash. I'm sorry. I was had a, I had a, was having a really great dream, and oh, I was on the Dwarven city ships again. Oh man. What'd you, what'd you know? It's a good thing that you and Blanche, you got me out of there. That, that was a bad, bad moment for, for dear old Telcar. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Here I go, talking to Pace again. Uh, it's my watch, right? Yes, sir. It's all right, man. I, kn- I know how that goes. I have my share of uh, dreams that I wish I could either stay awake for or go back to sleep for. It's not a problem. Yet. But yeah, you are, uh, you're up. All right. Don't worry. I'm... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do you, I'll do you proud. I'll do you, <clears throat> I'll do you proud. I know and, you will. Uh, Telcar, uh, she uh, she heads up deck, and uh, our passes by. She then gets Lamegli, then Quinn, then Tyler, then Grill, then Cindyr, and eventually Ianlin and Friedrich all pass their watch, and they morning comes. And you hear, uh, Pandora, you hear the bells as you awake in the morning. You hear the bells on the ship uh, announcing <sighs> the time. She has, like, on a face mask. She has on, like, you know those, like, long, <laughs> you know, robes that women in the 50s wear when they're going to, like, murder their husband kind of vibe? <laughs> she has- <laughs> it's got, like, the like the feather boa detailing yeah, on the Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, she has one of those. And she just, like, flops over and puts the pillow over her head. Um, and she... <laughs> Tries to ignore what's happening. Hatch, you also awaken uh, to the sound of bells. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I think I think Hatch is already awake. H- uh, Hatch is used to uh, waking up early. Um, and I think he's actually probably trying to quietly sneak out of the room as to not disturb Pandora, when he hears you know, trying to shuffle around with the pillow, I'm like, okay, you're basically awake. Can I just walk out? <laughs> yeah. You make your way up to the main deck. The crew uh, is in full uh, seafaring mode right now. Everyone is up either in the mass of the ship, tightening the rigging or loosening a sail, and or they are, you know, carving something or repairing some aspect of the ship. Blanche is up uh, at the main uh, area with the tiller and uh, Brash is barking orders on the side. Does it appear as though there's any particular oh, let, me, let me phrase that. Does this look like just normal ship, morning ship activity basically? Um, Not having ever been at sea um, you're not entirely sure. Everyone seems to be fairly like for all intents and purposes calm in they don't look, I was going to say, they don't look distressed at all. Like they're no. trying to, yeah. like the hullabaloo from yesterday. Oh, no, 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 no. This is like a different crew. Everyone is everyone is sort of moving at a very steady beat. Um, and everything seems to be going just fairly well. Okay. Uh, you know what, then? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the galley. I'm going to help out with breakfast then. I don't know nothing about rigging a ship for sailing. So okay. I know my way better around a blade. All right. Uh, you make your way down no to rigging. the make your way down to the the kitchens. Food, the food. They don't even have that much. The mess term. hall. The mess. The, it's not even really a mess hall. It's like, a, just like a cupboard. <laughs> a place where it's the um, the larder, uh, of the ship, the pantry, basically, <laughs> where foodstuffs are prepared. Uh, you encounter Friedrich, the halfling, uh, who's uh got like the equivalent of a pirate's uh, chef's hat on. Uh, and he seems to be preparing, uh, just bustling around. He, he just sort of looks up, stares at you, uh, given that you are six foot seven. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's what I put. Yes. Yeah. Um, sees your 
six foot seven stature and is like, what can I do you for? I duck my head down a little bit. Uh, good morning. Um, I am the new hire. I uh, will be honest with you. I do not know much about sailing, but well, I've... Say just typical, Brash. Sending me just who's he what's it to come and help me do my job. I can like leave. I, even at... oh, I can oh, leave. I was going to oh, lend oh, a hand. He immediately changes his attitude. Like, this is clearly not a halfling who... Whoever thought that they were going to be, ha they were going to have to be the ship chef, um, and is like, was momentarily very indignant that somebody thought that they needed help to do their job, but then is not <laughs> going to turn away the help when it is offered. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, uh, no, it's okay. I just, <clears throat> yeah, if you could just go over there and just, uh, uh, just take a look at the the, the soups that I have uh, have going, uh, and you look over there and you see like it's a, it's like a barley stew. Uh, that is cooking. It smells good. Um, uh, but he's like, yeah, if you could just keep an eye on that and, you know, just, uh, there's a, there's a rack of spices right here. If you just, you know, every now and again, you just throw a pinch in of something or other and, uh, hopefully it's edible. Oh God. I enjoy your permissive attitude towards cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll gladly just post somebody, up there. Somebody should put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I enjoy your I permissive attitude, attitude towards cooking. I'm, I'm on my way to the quote channel. The adjectives. I love it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just like... Hatch's attitude right now is, I need to make friends. And so I will do anything that anybody asks me to do right now. And I will make a mess of the upper decks if I am told to do anything up there. So I, I'm hiding out down here, trying to make as little <laughs> as little trouble for the crew as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll tend to the, the stews and soups that uh, uh, Friedrich has going on right now. Occasionally, just thrown in whatever. Give me a Whatever I can guy. reach. Give me a performance, performance sure. Guy. You're linguining to yeah, his ratatouille. I need a, here, here comes the ratatouille, <laughs> a plus zero. That's a three. Oh! Um, so you know that, you know the scene, have you ever seen the, the movie Chef with Jon Favreau? I have not. Is it Chef? Is that what it's called? Chef? The one where he has a food truck? Yeah. Wait, is it called Chef? I think it is Chef. I think so, yeah. That's okay. I'm getting. You ever, ever watched the show The Bear? Yes. I've seen clips from The Bear. Okay, so any of the cooking scenes uh, in the bear, right? Okay. Stressful. Yeah, so it's like super stressful, but it always comes out good. Um, that's not this. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's God. it's not like you're gonna kill someone, but it's like you threw in a the recipe called for a pinch of paprika, and you decided to jump dump the whole jar in there. I've got bigger um, fingers. Oh, What's God. a pinch? <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> exactly. Um, no so, one's ever died uh, from too much pepper. Yeah, uh, the uh, entire crew is in for a very rousing breakfast. Very um, granular soup. Oh, God! <laughs> like cinnamon in it. It's one step away from grits. <laughs> <laughs> um. Who knows what the future may hold? Uh, you could probably <laughs> prepare something better. It wasn't your dish to start with, and you just thought you were making it better. Exactly. Um, Blanche, I need you to give me a dexterity check. Just a standard piloting check. You're fine. Maintaining a, a correct heading. 17. 17, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, with that roll, you're actually able to, just knowing just the cut of the waves and your way through them, you're actually able to expertly pilot uh, the hair trigger uh, through some, you know, not necessarily stormy weather. It's not stormy at all, but it's just like you're able to, you know, dip and dive and you're able to uh, navigate the waters very expertly and you're moving very quickly. The she's, hair trigger not, is smooth right now. She's not an excellent pirate, but she's a very good driver. Yeah, she's a good sailor. <laughs> uh, and no doubt helped by Brash sort of keeping everybody on their toes, doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. Pandora. Yes. Below deck, the sounds of the ship. 
and sort of the half conscious way that you're approaching wakefulness right now. I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw. Who, which one of you motherfuckers <laughs> is trying Not to it. Curse, curse my ass? <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. Four. That's the low me. rolls. Four. Yeah. Fucking four. I'm not wise. I'm not. Um, Pandora, the sound of the creaking of the deck and the the waves hitting the sides of the ship. Suddenly, you are back aboard another ship. And oh, you are standing, looking out over the aft portion of the vessel, watching the city of Ash Queen get absolutely destroyed. And the sounds and the shakes and the impacts suddenly are happening over and over and over again, just from ringing in your ears. And suddenly the temples begin to disappear and these deities, gods, figures in the sky crashing the city down, just crushing it into the dust. And then you are once again awake. I think after that, Pandora would stumble out of the bed violently shaking, collapse to her knees, and is just like gasping for air as she's just trying to, she's essentially having like a mini panic attack as she's trying to like regain the feel of the wood beneath her hands, like right herself. Um, maybe she accidentally like gags a few times is like she tries not to, you know, upshuck what little she had in her stomach. And then after she takes a beat, she will grab for her book, slam it open, and just read and read and read and read and review all the notes that she's had. Um, anything that she's written down from the past few uh, weeks that maybe she's heard others say while she was in prison, stuff that she's heard on deck. Um, and I believe I heard that we were headed east towards Zephyr, right? Yes. And Brecca is towards the north. Yes. Right? So they're completely opposite. And not opposite, but they're off chart if we had East. So you're basically, you're opposite. Like, Grim Talbot is pretty much parallel to Zephyr. A couple leagues away. But then you know that if you were to go north up the mainland coast of Suristir, so Zephyr's here, Brecca is just a few hundred miles north. Great. So, okay. Up in the coast. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the reading and the, the analyzing, that kind of calms her down. And she'll have her mage hand apply her makeup as she gets ready to go above deck while she reads. As you, as you begin to read, you hearing the different tales that you've heard uh, about or that you recorded, whether it's from people who were on the merchant vessel before it was taken by the Charybdis Marauders, or it's by the Charybdis Marauders themselves as they had you prisoner on the Grim Talbot. You do know that there are certain pieces of the history of Brecca, things that because of your knowledge of the city of Ashkeline, you do know, for better or worse, you are heading in the direction not Zephyr itself, but Brecca. Even though it is slightly to the north, Brecca is a place where the magic of Odromia is strongest. It is a place of a story, of a kind of story that spans a great length of time that goes all the way back to the great cataclysm that first abraded the world. And you do know that in some ways, Brecca shares a similar history with that of Ashkeley, in that it is a place that is literally been touched by the gods. Great. One other thing that you do remember, and this is a very brief piece about, and it was something that uh, one, uh, a tiefling uh, prisoner who, who was originally from Brecca who was a prisoner of the Charybdis Marauders. You heard him just sort of talking and sharing stories with the other prisoners as a way of getting everyone to calm down and sort of accept their fate in some ways. 
one of the stories that he told about Brecca before he was eventually taken was of the ancient wizard towers in a place that he lived, which was called the Candles. And from what you gathered, it is a story about these ancient mages who built these towers as a way of observing this massive obsidian obelisk in the middle of the desert. And this place around which the city of Brecca was first built. Through the passage of their studies, the mages eventually discovered that they had been cursed and that their towers themselves were then swallowed up by the sands of the desert and reclaimed. And that a lot of the ancient magical artifacts that people were pulling from the sands, from the towers themselves, or from the, the candles, is what they've become to be called, are ancient artifacts. And are then, uh, they there's perhaps a black market or stuff like that. Great. Eventually though, as you have finished your, your reading and your makeup application, um, you head up to the main deck. Yeah, and I'll go look for the captain. Um, okay. Once I do. All right. Uh, Blanche, you are uh, you are by the the tiller, and uh, yeah, that's where you find her. Yep. Um, customary sparkle. Good morning, captain. I do love the way you do that. Oh, thank you. It you know takes one to know one. A woman of good taste, I should say. As she points to your very fine jacket that you're wearing. My baby's made me this silk. Would you like one? Oh, would you silk? Oh, I would simply die for something like that. Perhaps a little nightgown, something to wear on the deck on cool evenings. I'll get them started on something for you. You can't uh, come up here just to flatter my coat, though. What do you need? Well, Captain, and she's going to... Is there a little... <laughs> she's, what, she's six foot four and you're two feet tall? Yep. <laughs> She's like Chair. bracing. No, yeah, she, she's like, like a... bracing her feet on the wheel, so she's sort of like standing oh, and <laughs> holding onto the wheel. Yeah, you take up the wheel. Wow, um, that is actually like an incredibly efficient way of doing it because you're using all four of your uh, limbs to yep. just turn the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> just, just... Like this world was wheel? just yep. not made for Heron God. <laughs> this Heron God. No. Yeah. She is our rocket raccoon and we yeah. love her. It has she to is. be some heron gone designed boats out there. She's making it work though. So I watch yeah. as the captain hamster wheels um the wheel. The helm. <laughs> the helm. The helm of the ship. <laughs> the helm. And um she says, Well, Captain, I know yesterday we were speaking of, you know, um cash artifacts and whatnot, and I was just going through a couple notes from my research, and have you heard of the candles, by any chance? Have I? Um, it is something uh, that is uh, definitely uh, something that Grack has mentioned before as a, as a place where they are from. Uh, the candles, is, but in terms of how they describe it, it is a neighborhood of Brecca outside the city walls. Um, no mention of anything in terms of uh, ancient mage towers. Oh, isn't that sort of like a, a, a little suburban spot where they raise children and teach puppies all that rotten garbage? She laughs and leans in and goes, I'm sure that's what they want you to think it is. But it is so, so much more. The candles are... we talking are... profit? For... She's just kind of... Are we talking profit? Oh. I'm talking. <laughs> the ears go pink. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, uh, one ear was turned towards the ocean, kind of half listening. And the second you uh, she, you confirmed profit, it goes, hmm? So not, both ears are now facing towards you. <laughs> not only profit, but renown. Ooh. I'm what sold already. I believe you said it was gold, glory, and freedom. Ah, you heard that. Yes. How could I miss it? A girl after my own heart. But with that being said, I'm sure those things could be attained with some ancient magical artifacts. 
Can I roll an insight check to see how much I believe this? <laughs> sure. Just eat the apple What are you <laughs> waiting for? <laughs> I will sell you these cosmetics, and all you have to do is find two more people to give these cosmetics <laughs> to, and the through line, the yes, profits. Yes, it's a pyramid scheme! <laughs> It's a multi-level marketing. Yeah. Mary, I'm actually a representative for Mary Kay. Girl boss. Girl boss gatekeep! <laughs> That'd be a 16, so... <laughs> uh, um, on a 16. Uh, Pandora definitely... They seem to be telling the truth, but in a way where... On a 16. You're not entirely sure if it's because it is true or they really believe that it's true. Fair enough. All right. Well, you say in your research, exactly how long was the research? Like, how, how long were you researching? Oh, I mean, I listen here, I listen there. A few mm. weeks, really, but... I like to get, I like to hear from the people. You know, dusty old libraries, there's only so much you can get as opposed to hearing those who have lived there and or seen and or done so many things. Oral history, some would say. And, you know, I just I just noticed that the, our trajectory, I mean, we're headed uh, towards Brecker anyway. So I just thought I would, you know, throw it out there, bring it up. There also is a, I mean, a black market, but I don't really think you'd be interested in that, right? Oh, no, 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 no. You, you'd be very wrong, darling. Black market tends to come with best prices. So, oh. by all means, oh. I, I had apps, not that I don't have the utmost trust in, in, in your research, but when I think research, I, I think someone a, a bit like my two younger brothers. They got these big, thick glasses, make themselves look oh. absolutely ridiculous, and that's all oh, they please. do all day is hang out around dusty, nasty books. No. But you say you get it from word of map. Yes. Now that I trust. <laughs> Wonderful. So, perhaps we're going to take a little trip to the market. A shopping spree for us girls. Oh, shopping. Yes, indeed. Let's do. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> How lovely. And she'll just saunter off. <laughs> we're going to get ourselves coming killed. coming for my first mate position. <laughs> cannot stand. Girl boss gatekeep Mary Kate pyramid scheme. <laughs> wow. Um It's the most beautiful friendship I've ever had in a campaign and I love it already. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Don't trust it. <laughs> uh this this information gleaned fresh uh a fresh plot is is now is now hatched. Uh Blanche, give me a uh give me a Straight uh, dexterity roll. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yes, uh, Brash. As you are sort of barking orders uh, to uh, Cindir the Furbolg, uh, you suddenly start to feel the, the the tilt of the deck, and you look at the front of the ship, and you definitely see that you are now heading uh, a more northeasterly. Uh, um, Meanwhile, hatch below deck. Give me another uh, performance check. Oh God, we have to oh, do that. You're so kind, <laughs> so very kind of you to give me see another if you chance. Can, see if you can balance out the spice. Oh, for the mustard go. seeds, that's a good one. <laughs> Roll for sandwich, a seven. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord. Um, We're gonna be poisoned. We're gonna be in the poison condition. As, <laughs> as the, the cooking has commenced, um, you do notice that Friedrich has started to step further and further away from where the soup is <laughs> made. As get, whether it's your dragon nature, I know you're a blue dragon, but uh, you spice might have just a, like a different effect on you. Um, but on this poor halfling gentleman, uh, it is having a very potent, palpable effect, um, and their <laughs> eyes have just begun to like water visibly. And they're just, there's this might be just a, the faintest beginnings of just a trail of snot that is starting to come <laughs> out of their nose um, as oh, the spice, God. the spice is becoming overwhelming in this very close quarters <laughs> cooking area. But I think that should be just about 
good. <laughs> Say when. Say when. No, I'm gonna die. <laughs> It's the cheese distributor it's at the, uh, the Olive Garden. It's the Italian restaurant. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Um, the, uh, Frederick can't say when because he left the room. <laughs> um, oh, I better tell the captain we need more pepper. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, as we uh, finish with Hatch, we move back up to the main deck. Uh, Brash, you have noticed now that you're you're changing course, uh, heading north of Zephyr. Uh, hey, Captain. Yes, I know. I meant to call you up here soon. I get your butt up. Come on. I just look at her expectantly. Uh, new passenger here. She sort of waves a, well, a hand up towards, um, uh, towards Pandora. And anyway, and as she's talking with one of the crew members as they're trying to work, as I told him, I said, darling, that's not a savant. <laughs> that's, that's a sommelier. <laughs> um, uh, Grill, the Kenku, uh, Kenku, uh, not actually having a language per se of their own, uh, just repeats back what they've just heard. <laughs> it's not a savant. That's a sommelier. So, yeah, you know that it is, you know. Some, no? No? It's all right. I'll educate you. So, anyway. Pandora, <laughs> you continue this conversation, like, for way longer <laughs> than you probably should before you recognize that this Kenku doesn't, this Kenku female does not understand. Such a good listener. They're a really good listener, but they just keep, re it's like a, it's like a Meisner exercise. They yeah. just keep responding back <laughs> the exact same I thing that you like just we're, said. We're really really good active listener. Yeah, we're like really on the same wavelength, darling. And I, you know, you're just wonderful. You're wonderful. Hold on. So what was that exact line? You said, that's not a savant, that's a sommelier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're just wonderful. Wonderful, darling. Okay. All right. Brash, you eventually get to the main deck with... Uh, with Blanche. All right, you want to explain what's uh, going on? Well, our lovely passenger here, as we to break away from to, to that beautiful conversation <laughs> for a half a second, and then back. So you remember the the last little tip that we got? How how it 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 didn't it didn't end up did it did not end up very Almost good. Almost ended up with us getting killed. I remember. It, yeah. Well, our new passenger ha has has another tip. Oh, really? Embreka for a black market. You're aware that our record with that is not very uh I, I I know that our current track record is not so outstanding, no, but then again we are a fairly new crew. This for is the like third the time. fifth one we've had. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. I, I know, that's not the point. <laughs> Listen, one of these pay tips is gotta it's gotta earn to a payout. We're not going to get any amount of money anywhere is by just carefully picking targets. Yeah, I know, but when we don't carefully pick our targets, shit, like what just happened happens. Well, I, I mean, freaking marauders, Blanche? What? Well, no, the, how no, lucky that we are I didn't. Get out of there? That I did not hear anything about any about any marauders. You didn't hear them. No, you saw them as we no. hauled ass. I mean, it being in the air. Yes, I know. Look. Brash, we need to go somewhere else. Do you have another tip we can follow? No. I hear what let you're saying, and it's all valid points, but... Let me, let me at least talk to her about it, all right? By all means. All right. I'm going to learn to have some hesitation, some patience, just... Your window shopper, but it's for your whole life. Boulet boo. I need to put that in the quotes section. For a window shopper, but it's for your whole life. Jesus. That is the best summation for this character that I could ever have thought of. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, I will try and uh, locate Pandora before she talks to another crewmate. <laughs> <laughs> So you do know that, like the sommelier, like they do through uh, excuse years me. of testing. Excuse me. <laughs> First mate, as she turns around, sparkles, prestidigitation. Good morning. 
Good morning. Uh, listen, uh, it came to my attention that you had a, a little bit of a conversation with the captain about a potential tip. Yes, yes, and I, I, and if you would like, and she's like looking around to like see if anyone's listening. Should I? Is it something that should be on the down low? Or... Yeah, maybe just maybe just follow me, and I'll I'll take her to like the stairwell leading just under the uh, or heading down under dock uh, under deck, but we'll just stay there. Okay. Um, as you do, give me a perception check. Okay. Oh, I missed. Ooh. Uh, that is a 19 plus one, 20. As you begin to make your way sort of semi down the stairs going below deck, the immediate wall of scent oh, from God. the cooking that is happening beneath deck hits you in your very sensitive Loxodon nostrils. What the hell? <laughs> First mate, are, are you all right? Give me <laughs> oh, oh dear, he's ill, he's sick. Uh, Someone, I'm... quick, call the doctor. Listen, please, stop. Yeah, I, I shall I'm tend to fine. your wounds. As she's just like, gently, doesn't know what to do, but just patting his shoulder. There, there, you will get through this. <laughs> All right. Sorrows. Sorrows. I'm going to need you to... Sorrows. Sorrows. Why is it just watching? I'm going to, like, take a step out of the stairwell, and real quick, I'm just going to be... Frederick! What the hell, man? What are you cooking? (laughs) You hear the the small voice, uh, uh, a very faint-sounding halfling voice uh, from below deck. Uh, it's... Oh, boy... I don't, I don't feel good. <laughs> Unbeknownst to you, Hatch, you're not entirely sure how it happened, but this soup is a chemical weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I like don't know what there. Friedrich's problem was. It just <laughs> tastes fine to me. Liquid napalm. <laughs> Chewy. Just like, <laughs> just like my mom used to make. It's soup! It's soup. I come out from the lower deck with like a big, those big uh, metal, uh, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> it's got a all cauldron? the soup in it. A cauldron, I guess? It's like the cylindrical. Yeah, pot. It's yeah, big pot. pot. Big pot. Yeah. Big pot. Grubs of on. Grab a bowl. <laughs> Can Blanche? For, <laughs> for breakfast. Can Blanche smell that from up top? <laughs> Give me a perception check. <laughs> yeah, see? Perceptions. That's an eighteen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> hey, cool, awesome. I was hoping air, so. Mixing with the sea air, it, it automatically oh, does not God. feel good. Um, it's like the air suddenly takes the scent, and it immediately <laughs> it like singes the hair around your ears, and it's just like it's all not painful per se, but it definitely gives you like the. Th- Gag, almost. <laughs> this is going to be where I lean in a little bit to what you told me, Purpley, with that was in in your eye, in, in your head cannon for, because um, the second that the the smell of the serious spice and napalm hits her nostril, she goes, "Oh, that smells like my daddy, Stu Friedrich. Have you actually done something right?" <laughs> Friedrich is sort of like woozy yes. on like the main deck. He's like, "Lizzie, this is." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try and catch him before he hits the deck. He's <clears throat> so overdramatic. This is me. This is the new guy. Got points at Hatch, oh. who's just like stirring this giant cauldron of stew. Oh, like you know, there's a, it's it's kind of a struggle. Like it's not the spoon isn't going through it easy. Oh, God. <laughs> it's becoming a porridge. Yeah, I pull it out. And it's a porridge of napalm. <laughs> Gumbo. Gumbo. Uh, for oh. whatever, for whatever uh, it's worth, uh, Blanche, you smell this, and it immediately takes you back to some of the chaotic recipes, uh, chaotic fey recipes, uh, that your just your your Harringon parents uh, and all of the the extended family used to make. It immediately takes you back to purpley, and that is nice. It's this. For all the chaos it may be causing with the rest of the crew, surprisingly, not Grack. Grack smells it, and he's like, 
Ooh, what is this fiery dish? But like the one uh, thing we agree on. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna mute me with that man later. He's a tiefling, he's infernal, it's you know <laughs> he he's like, What the what in the nine hills is that? And he immediately begins to like come down from the crow's nest and he like takes the ladle uh from Hatch and he's like oh He doesn't come down to dance with a beautiful half orc <laughs> But the second there is I respect any spice, that. Cause that's me. <laughs> that's me. If you have a snack, absolutely. What up, y'all got Cheetos? <laughs> I'm on my way. Flaming hot. Flaming hot. <laughs> Only flaming uh, hot. Miss Miss Blanche, uh, we did not have an opportunity to be formally introduced yesterday, but uh, you know, if I'm going to be under your employ for some time, I thought maybe it would be beneficial to us all if I took up some responsibility, and I have made some soup with the help of Friedrich for breakfast, if you would like some. And I, I, I take a bowl. I didn't, I didn't do any of this. <laughs> this is brainchild, and I merely added a little <laughs> a little soup stone of my own touch to it. I, and I cannot I take, say this strongly enough. I didn't do any of this. I take the soup like spoon. swaying in my arms right <laughs> I dig it into the pot. No! And I pull it out, and I take another spoon. I kind of, like, scrape it off of the, the first spoon. Into a, a bowl for Blanche. I give her a fork. It takes like a half a second to just. Oh, it's just like purpley. Blanche, and as unladylike as you've ever hair, seen. Your ears, your hair and gone ears, just sort of go back, and they're just like very suddenly relaxed. Apparently, the only uh, the only people who actually seem to be enjoying this dish are the dragonborn, the the tiefling, and the hair and gone. Um, everybody else, Pandora, you don't seem to mind it. No, You've no, smelled I'm... spicier things in your yes. life. It's all right, darling. I'm paleo pescatarian, so I'm also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You know what? I'm actually. I'm gonna save a little bit of this. I'm gonna put some in a little flask. Just hold on to that for later next time if I'm hungry. A snack. Brilliant. <laughs> um. The crew eventually uh, gathers uh, for breakfast. Uh, a breakfast of soup and hardtack. Um, suddenly, everyone seems very interested in eating hardtack all of a sudden. Like, it's. Except with a few exceptions here and there, like, everybody else is like, oh, bread? <laughs> um, and uh, the soup, there's tons of leftover, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, <laughs> oh boy. I'll put it in the I'll put it in one of the chests it'll, it'll stay yeah eventually though everyone gets back to their uh their tasks uh eventually uh you do notice that um uh Tyler eventually comes on comes over to you Blanche and he's like so, uh, so why are the changing course captain well you all wanted an opportunity to make better money didn't you that's that's part of the problem is that we keep running into these hairy situations where we don't really get paid Mm-hmm. Harry situation. <laughs> yep. I knew it. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, about that. I, I, I just wanted to apologize. I know that uh, we kind of sprung that mutiny on you, but uh, <laughs> that, uh, it wasn't it wasn't my suggestion. I was very much on your side, and I uh, <laughs> just wanted to make sure that you know that I know Greg, he can kind of get kind of uppity every now and then, but... Oh, you, don't you worry, not one little bit. I'm very optimistic about this new opportunity. Oh, I'm not optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my freaking God. <laughs> okay. Um, I so, love her. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, <laughs> more, more opportunities to make to make some cash. Um, all about that. All about that. On, I'm 100 in your in your corner. And let me just tell you right now. He sort of takes his wing and he just sort of puts it up so that he's like making sure that nobody else can hear. Um, I'll make sure the rest of the crew also is fully aware that you know we are about to maybe come into some some corn. Uh, given the opportunity. What, what is that opportunity, if <laughs> you don't mind me asking? Well, that would be from our new passenger, as a matter of fact. Now, listen here, Tyler, and she'll hop up again onto the onto the railing on the side of the ship so she can be more eye-level with him and she's not doing this number. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I meant what I said when I hired each and every one of you, you included. If you think 
any of my plans are a bad idea, I expect you to say so. Ain't no point in, in me being captain. The point of me being captain is to take the blame when shit goes wrong. Right? He looks like he wants to say something. You know, you couldn't, you could, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, yeah, you um, take it, take, taking, taking the blame when, when uh, things go off the rails, so to speak. Uh, definitely. Well, it's not any of you that anyone mutinied against, was it? It was me, was it not? Yeah. All right. So, like I said, if you think I'm given a bad order, say something next time. Don't just start up a damn mutiny for no reason. I can't speak for Grack, um, but I'll speak to him later. I, I think I think the reason was was more so to do with the past five times that um, that we'd gone through some kind of plan of yours and Brash's, and mm -hmm. we'd all it kind of wild. Pardon my. Eric Cochran, uh, tits up, and uh, <laughs> didn't exactly pan out the way uh, the way we wanted it to. That's true. I'm assuming you have better tips then, or know somebody on board that does. Oh, I can't. I'm just I'm just a humble bosun. I wouldn't know uh, a tip from uh, a grenade, but uh, <laughs> I assume that you've got good good knowledge of things, and I will respect your authority. All right. Well, th there has to have been some other reason for you to walk over here. Oh, I'm just, you know, just wanting to hear if we got any, you know, viable options in terms of, you know, turning our luck around. Well, we're currently looking at going and retrieving some artifacts to sell in the black market. Sound clear enough to you? You can see sort of the, the gears turning for him. So, am I to assume by our change in course that we are headed to Brecca then? That is the current plan, I believe. Okay. All right. All right. And you can see, you can see sort of this this uh, change come over his face, and he just suddenly is. You can see sort of adjust his opinion of you. All right. All, all right, then, Captain. Uh, well, keep calm, carry it on, and think happy thoughts. And she hops uh, back up to the <laughs> I told you I had a million of these. Thank you. Right, right, Thank oh, you. right, oh, Captain. And uh, he gets back, uh, he goes back uh, to his tasks. Over the next hour, though, give me a perception check, Blanche. Oh, you little bitch. Perception? Mm-hmm. And that'll be a six. Yeah, he goes back He goes back to his tasks. Yeah, uh -huh, I bet he does. <clears throat> um, he, in the next day, passes fairly uneventfully. Just... Pandora avoided that conversation with the first mate. <laughs> <laughs> Turn in. Turn in. Uh, I got like bleach gas in my eye <laughs> and I couldn't think. <laughs> uh, you all. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, Pandora. Uh, Damn it. That evening. That evening. <laughs> after after the, uh, the trials and tribulations of breakfast uh, have passed. And uh, Brash, you are fully recovered at this point. Fuck. Uh, Pandora, you eventually do reconnect with uh, with Brash. Oh, howdy there! <laughs> I think I think I think it's like she's trying to avoid this conversation, so she's in her like getting ready for bed, aka going to murder her husband gown, right? Evening gown, and she has it like clutched around, you know. First mate, I I do have to retire soon, but what can I help you with? This will only take a second. I assure you. Uh, about that tip, whole pro the situation where we're going to break it. Uh, what exactly are you planning on? You know, what's the haul there? How are you, how are we gonna get paid? Pay? Well, you see, I can't guarantee pay, 
for I am not I'm not a uh, I, I'm merely a pro, I, I see facts and I provide them and you can pick and choose what you would like to follow but I don't know how much well you are a caster yourself as by your beautiful playing so you must know about the magical ley lines in Adromia yes I'm familiar with a few of them right Brecca is one of the cities with one of the most going back to ancient times. There are rumors and tales and stories of pillars of mage towers sunk underneath the sand, of which various and many ancient artifacts have been left behind, of which, which sprouted up in the case, has been a black market. Now, while I can't guarantee, you know, the excavation of said magical objects, there certainly should be something worthwhile at a black market. And if not for pay, and she looks around like at the ship, it seems your crew, of which you're doing a very good job from what I've seen, is, is a bit lackluster. Well, they got their, uh, their issues. And what I find in a group is that it's wonderful to have a common goal to rally around. And, I don't know, should things go down at a certain black market, that would get this crew renowned, yes? Brash will take a second and kind of sit on that word, renown. Yeah, it would. I mean, unless, of course, I understand if you're more humble sort, the more humble pirate, of which you can, like, barter and, and trade and find other things there of magical resources. Well, but hang I, on. I, hang on now. Let's talk more about this renowned business. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 uh... So, let me get this right. You're saying that if we go here and we do a not a deal, but we get shenanigans in suit. Hmm. That leads to our name getting bigger. Well, of course. I mean, if we we're to discover ancient artifacts, pirate crew discovers ancient artifacts hidden within the sands, or a black market farce, right? Pirate crew storms black market, stealing all of its goods and gories. There are just some options. But in a world such as Brecca and a land full of such magic... <clears throat> <laughs> I see how it's impossible to never make a name for yourself. But what would I know? Alas, I am but a, a reader of words, a peruser of scribbles. Only a true performer turns to you dramatically. Who would know about such things? Playing him like a freaking fiddle right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right, you've got my interest. You've got my attention. What about a plan? All right. If, if we can't find anything in them sands, we're gonna need a clear route in, a clear route out. If we're even gonna begin to attempt this. Hmm. Absolutely, and I'm all for a plan. Now we are going to need some more intel. Because the strongest decisions and the best decisions we can make are the more information we have. So the closer we get, I'll be more than happy to do that on my end. But I also believe... I I'm sorry, I, I thought I heard a dialect on one of our crew members. Aren't there some crew members that are from Brecca themselves? Yeah, uh... Grek. Grek was uh, from the Candles, I believe. Interesting. I, I don't know, but I wonder if they might have any connections. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Watching um, manipulation in real time. <laughs> it's, it's a thing to experience, let me tell you. Um, well, let me uh, let me follow up with him and That's see what I can idea. get out of him. That's why I know you're the first mate. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> taking such good care of me. Oh my god. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Forget playing like a fiddle. It's like playing like a whole orchestra. Yeah, the whole <laughs> philharmonic. He's playing me like I play my drum daily. <laughs> wow. That's why you're the first mate. I'm so glad that you guys catch on. 
I love this woman. You're not allowed to go anywhere ever. She's she's neutral. I'm saying that here and now. Also, peruser of scribbles has gone into the quotes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to see what I can figure out. You get some rest. Uh This could this can be the one. So thank we'll you. See. Of course. After your lovely playing, it's the least I could do. <laughs> All right, Matt. Good night, first mate. And as she turns, she'll roll like when he can't see her <laughs> big eye roll. <laughs> but that was, no. that was that was legendary. I'm not gonna even ask. I'm not gonna even ask for like a charisma roll of any kind. That was just like nah. Perfect. Nah. You can't Superb. interrupt that. Yeah. All right. You take that away with a roll. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, Pandora, you bed down again. Uh, hatch after you know, you do end up getting a, a better sense of like Friedrich's cooking style for what it's worth, <laughs> whatever it could be. Um, you sort of give them more space to handle like lunch and dinner. Um, uh, but your breakfast, unforgettable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. Uh, everybody sort of uh, battens down the hatches um, and uh, y'all uh, go through the watch again. I'm not going to make anyone roll for it, um, but you get through uh, another night undisturbed. Um, seas are calm and initially with uh, Blanche uh, just piloting or helming the ship expertly, you arrive the next day. And you, Pandora, you are again awakened by the sound of a bell. Slam pillow into face repeatedly. Thankfully, <laughs> it is not uh, followed by another dream. Yeah. Um, eventually, though, you all make your way up to the deck of the hair trigger. And off in the distance, you see... The faintest beginnings of a city as the sun is coming up. And as the sun is coming up, there is, there is like, there's the sun itself, there's the city, and then in the very center of the city, the sun is literally like glinting off of one portion of it, like off of a central reflective portion of it that sort of is illuminating. The ocean around you and you do realize that you have arrived at the city of Brecca and that is where we will leave it for tonight oh that was amazing Great job, yeah. everyone. this is wonderful this is so exciting oh we did it we survived we survived <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for watching our maiden voyage of Our Flag Means Doom. Tune in next time to see what our adventurers see as we proceed into the ancient city of Rekka, the capital of Surastir. Thank you all for watching. We love you, and we hope to see you next time. Please roll nothing but nat 20s. Good night.